I fly halfway around the world and an odd note is waiting for me in my hotel room. It says to come to the bridge down by the river. This looks like the place. I could really go for some Wiener Schnitzel after the long walk out here. I am supposed to meet someone down here. Have you seen anyone? Do you have any whiskey? Sober up, sir. <laughs> I'm glad Chuck is dead. Ruined my life. Wake up, sir. I have to go. Sleep well. It is a rock. There, I've completed step three of the note. Now for step four. So tell me again why you're here. I was assigned to the case by the home office in Albuquerque. There is no home office in Albuquerque. It's neat to know. Look, I like working a case alone. I especially don't need some junior agent messing up my investigation. Especially some junior agent that thinks I don't know there isn't a home office in Albuquerque. So stay out of my way. Take a lot of notes, sit back and learn, and I'll wrap up this case and we can both get the hell out of here. Your reputation certainly precedes you, Agent Ray. I'll take that as a compliment, Agent Reyes. It's how it was intended. I'm sure it was. Let's photograph the victim and head into town to talk to the local sheriff. The body is starting to pixelate. Body starting to pixelate. This is going to be a long night. Appears to be a male, approximately 40 years old. Looks like he's been in the water for 24 hours. You can tell by the pixelation around the nose and neck. Let's see here. There's no wallet in his pockets. But I found a card, possibly a key card from a hotel. It's a hotel key card from the dead man. There appears to be a small hole in the back of the head. Origins unknown. The hole in the victim's head doesn't look like a gunshot, more like a puncture from a sharp object. Which is odd, because the opening title sequence clearly showed a gunshot with accompanying sound effect. His suit looks tailored, possibly European in design. Appears to be a male, approximately 40 years old. Looks like there's no... Sure. I'll carry your c Smile. Now we can head into town and find the local sheriff. It's an empty whiskey bottle. Definitely not the murder weapon. Wrong sized body hole. It's pretty rusty and totally out of chainsaw gas. Definitely not the murder weapon. No missing body parts. Hmm. There are signs of a struggle here. This is clearly a drag mark. 
The victim was obviously knocked out here, then dragged over to the stream. I don't see any blood, so I think he would... Sounds like someone in the sewer is playing the violin. That old tree is blocking the great entrance. Signals are very strong tonight. What signals? The signals. Signals are very strong tonight. Yes, you already said that. But what signals? <laughs> I'm just screwing with you. Dark night. Deserted road. Me in a giant pigeon costume? It was too good to pass up. But the signals are strong tonight. Very strong. You almost ran over a federal agent. That's a felony. Sorry about that. Like I said, the signals are very strong tonight. Do you know anything about the body by the bridge? Why is it whenever a dead body is found, suspicion always falls to the person dressed as a giant bird? Hey, if the beak fits. We don't know anything about a dead body. But the signals are strong tonight. Very strong. Why are you dressed like a giant pigeon? We're the Pigeon Brothers Plumbing. I'm Beth. That's my sister Emily. Hi there! Why brothers, if you're sisters? Dad was expecting to have sons. And he was too cheap to have the van repainted. So we're just rolling with it till he's dead. Oh, soon. Shut up, Emily. This is really odd. Should I save my game? I wouldn't worry about it. The game was expertly designed to have no dead ends or death. Yet still be scary and have a sense of tension. You can feel safe exploring whatever you want. But I'd watch out for the signals. They can be very strong and disrupt the power grid. But playing classic adventure games has taught me to save often. That was true, up until Monkey Island. At least with LucasArts-style adventures. Then the designers realized that death and dead ends weren't making the game more enjoyable. It was actually making it less fun. That seems like a sensible approach to adventure game design. It is. It just takes a little longer and requires more thought and planning. But it really pays off in the end. I think I've had enough of you. I need to find the sheriff and solve a murder. Nice talking to you, too. Was
Wait for me. More like symbol stupid. Howdy! I'm the Thimbleweed Park Sheriff. I don't remember calling the Federinos. That's what you are, Feds. Hard to miss the government issue suits. <laughs> Damn straight, we're the feds. Whoa! Hold your horse Reno's. No need to get snippy. Looks like you heard about our little murder Reno out by the bridge, huh? There is nothing little about murder, sir. <sighs> Ignore him. He's new. No sense in wasting everyone's time, Reno. This cutscene is starting to get long, and it's only gonna get longer. Let's find the coroner and uh, get you on your way. Wrestling starts at 8. I hope he's talking about on TV. The coroner is waiting for you in his office. Come see me when you're done. I apologize, Areno, for all the lights being off. We don't stay open as long as you city slick Arenos do at night. Even for a murder? Especially for murder. That makes no sense. Are we authorized to shoot people arenos? Howdy who! I'm the Thimbleweed Park Coroner. Welcome to the future who! Oh, these are the latest in crime-fighting computers made by Pillowtronics, Inc. This is all probably pretty advanced, even for the Fedahoos. Oh, do enlighten us. I love your sarcastic humor, who, Agent Ray. It's not humor. <laughs> there you go again. We're interested in any help your computers can give us. They look marvelous. <sighs> yes, happy to explain. So happy to explain, who. Yeah, you might want to take notes. Already on it. Tell us about the Bloodtron 3000. This is the Bloodtron 3000. Put two bloody objects in and it will match the blood type, printing out a report to who. Tell us about the Fingertron 3000. Right, Areno, the Fingertron 3000. Insert a fingerprint registry of known criminals and a fingerprint from the murder weapon on fingerprint tape, and it will do a match of who. Oh, tell us about the Facetron 3000. The Facetron 3000. Dorg, as I like to call it. Let me guess. The Face Areno? <laughs> no, that's what the sheriff calls it. You city folk who crack me up. Just insert two pictures of an individual and it will verify a positive match. Aren't you the Sheriff Areno? Oh my, no. <laughs> no, no, no who. Well, people say there is some resemblance around the eyes, but we're as different as peas a who's in a pot of who. Plus, the sheriff has that annoying areno he adds to everything. You'll never hear me doing that a who. Sure, whatever. Did you use these computers to investigate the pillow factory fire? Oh, sure did. Four computers positively showed the fire was caused by the factory guard. No doubt a who about it. Could the computers have been wrong about the fire? Not these computers. Oh, the state of the art of who computers made by Pillowtronics. Absolutely infallible. Isn't there a conflict of interest with Pillowtronics and the fire? Whoa, now. Pillowtronics and its founder, Chuck, are above reproach. Chuck built this town and was a computer and pillow genius. Are the feds uh, looking into this case? It was solved uh, 20 years ago. No, he's just curious. He's a pillow factory fire buff. He's got a CompuServe chat room and everything. Fascinating stuff. I think we've heard enough. This is all very impressive, sir. This should cut hours of our investigation. <sighs> Uh, go see the sheriff in his office for a full explanation of the amazing Arrestron 3000. I have some paperwork to do, who? Oh, yeah, almost forgot. 
Uh, these Tron machines are fully voice activated, so if you need any information, just talk to them. It's like we're living in the futuristic year of 2017. I hate this town. Let's investigate these Tron machines, then go see the sheriff and get out of here. It's empty. It's empty. There's a fingerprint. There's a fingerprint brush, a small amount of fingerprint powder, but it's missing the fingerprint tape. Insert two photos of an individual, and the face Tron 3000 will verify a positive match and print out a report. Fully voice activated. Stop reading and start talking. It's a very dark. Hello again, Agent Arenos. Hopefully the coroner fills you in on our state-of-the-art Areno computers. You, I mean, the coroner said something about the Arrestron? Yes, the Arrestron 3000. The last step in a fully computerized Areno arrest. The final link in the chain of a guaranteed conviction Areno. Every detail Areno analyzed and verified by computer. Moving on. Right, uh, sorry Areno, I, I get carried away sometimes. This is the big bad boy Areno you've been hearing about. The Arrestron 3000. Uh, just feed three reports from other Tron machines into this, and it issues a 100% Areno valid arrest warrant. Yeah, these machines are the reason we need only one law enforcement officer Areno. Chuck said that computers will soon put us all out of work, allowing for a full life of luxury. Chuck who? Sadly, Chuck passed away a few days ago. There was a big service out at the cemetery, Areno. Oh, the entire town showed up, which isn't surprising for the hero of Thimbleweed County. We'll talk more about Chuck later. I need to run a Reno and check on a disturbance call out at the old circus. Probably that stupid clown Areno again. Looks like we need to go talk to the rest of the weirdos that live in this town. We should split up. It will be faster. You cooling your heels in the local diner would also make things go faster. If we follow agency questioning protocols, this shouldn't take long. <sighs> Just don't mess anything up. I want to get out of here as fast as possible. Agreed. Just a bunch of files. There's a fingerprint book here. Just a bunch of files. Just a bunch of just a bun just a bunch of files. It's a police radio. Looks like it's on. This has fingerprints for everyone in Thimbleweed Park. Certified Fingertron 3000 compatible. No time to talk. We have to fix this slight leak. Can I do anything to help? Well, the Hydratron's tube is obviously burned out. We could use a new one. A WC-627? Yeah, we're out of that size. Must have been the signals. Yes, the signals. Welcome to the S&D Diner. Hey, just so you know, that article in the Thimbleweed Nickel about botulism was a smear job. So, what can I do for you, honey? I'm a federal agent. Know anything about the dead body? Not too much, just scuttlebutt from the morning breakfast crowd. And I don't want to get into trouble, especially with a crazy person like him. You're not talking about me, are you? Shut up, Dave. Don't screw with the feds. Tell us what you know. Okay, honey, but you didn't hear this from me. 
I'd look into that crazy clown that lives out at the old circus. He's been out there since the circus closed down years ago. Never takes his makeup off. He's got serial killer written all over him. It all happened about nine or ten years ago. Ransom the Jerk was the featured act at Stupendous Brothers Circus. He was about ready to go on stage and meet his well-earned doom. Big night tonight. Full house after my raunchiest Tonight Show appearance. I really got Johnny good, that little jackwad. It's his own fault for not being able to take a joke. I better get ready to go on stage and insult the crap out of these thimbleweed idiots. I just need to fix my hair, put on my makeup and clown nose, and find my joke book. My circus poster, featuring the amazing Ransom the Clown. That's me, face. It's my locked safe where I keep all my money. It's an IOU. I it's my lawyer's business card. What the hell is this? Hmm. The number of trophies I have. The number of steps going up to my bed. The number of kids that Carney Joe has. Meanest clown of 1977 and 1978. Ransom the clown. Ransom, I'm glad I caught you before you went on stage. Autographs are a hundred bucks. Ransom, I'm your business manager and lawyer. I don't want your autograph. Okay, 50 then. I just wanted to let you know that your mistress is waiting at your house in Aspen, and your private jet is being fueled and ready to whisk you there when the show is over. Also, we have a deal worth millions to license a line of toddler Ransom the Clown talking insult dolls. Did he get the liability clause waived? Correct. They will assume all liability when the kids grow up to be beepholes. Good. Toddlers start out as It's not my fault they end up that way. Okay, fine. 25 bucks. I should have been a dentist. You. It's a prototype Ransom the Clown doll. It's a perfect likeness of me. Well, maybe the nose is a bit too big. Ouch! That's tight, but it'll have to do. Glad I only have to wear it for a couple of hours. Hmm. The number of trophies I have. The number of steps going up to my bed. The number of kids that Carney Joe has. Ah! Go yourself. Go yourself. Well, you. It's fresh out of that crappy popcorn. Win big today. You got my money, Clowny? That's Ransom the Clown, asswipe. Okay, you got my money, Ransom the asswipe, Clown? One thousand clams or you're not getting your joke book back. Eh, yeah, serves you right for playing the duckies. I need my joke book. The crowd's waiting for me. I told you before. You ain't getting it till I get the thousand bucks you owe me for the duckies. Plus, $138 in interest. Where the f am I gonna get that kind of dough? I have a show to do. 138 bucks in interest, you loan shark. You are putting a squeeze on me. Not my problem. Give me my joke book, face. I told you before, you ain't getting it till I get the thousand bucks you owe me for the duckies. Plus, $138 in interest. Where the f am I gonna get that kind of dough? I have a show to do. 138 bucks in interest, you loan shark. You are putting a squeeze on me. I don't know, Ransom the Asswipe Clown. Maybe it's in your hidden safe. So, uh, how's the old ball and chain and kids, huh? My wife's doing fine, no thanks to you. And so are the three kids. But they still cries themselves to sleep every night after that stare you gave them. How many kids do you say you have? I have three kids, why? Oh, uh, nothing. You, I'm out of here. It's already. Hmm. 
The number of trophies I have. The number of steps going up to my bed. The number of kids that Carney Joe has. It's my locked safe where I keep all my money. Let's see if I can remember this combination. Okay, now. And finally... Tough! Da! Next time, I'm setting it to one, two, three. It's exactly a thousand dollars in a... My own private backstage entrance to the big top. It's my Ransom the Clown swear jar with 138 bucks in it. I'll just take the big bucks. Ooh, my cloud fro looks great now. Now there's the face I love. That goes out. Ah, step right up. Oh, so you decided to pay up. Yeah, well, not much choice. Now, where's my joke book? Here, yeah, the jokes all suck. So how'd you get to be so famous with jokes like these? Yeah? What do you know about being funny? Uh, about as much as you do, which is nothing. Now, scram, clowny. You're scaring the customers. Just shoot like a man or a... Hello, faces. I'm Ransom the insult clown. I hope no one gets their feelings hurt easily. And if you do, it's your own fault for not being able to take a joke. You guys love that pillow factory. It's the lamest claim to fame a town has ever had. Paris has the Eiffel Tower, New York has the Statue of Liberty, and Thimbleweed Park has a pillow factory. You better hope to God that feather pillows never go out of style. You guys are obsessed with this Chuck guy. Seriously, I haven't seen brainwashing like this since the Manson family. Blink twice, you want me to get help? Hey, you, kid with a crappy wheelchair. Were you in a past life or something? Seriously, kid, you're in a wheelchair, and you got a face that looks like that? God's definitely punishing you for something. Hey, you, lady with a huge nose. I say lady, but your beak suggests you're a toucan. You shouldn't have bought tickets for the show tonight, toots. You should be saving your money for a rhinoplasty. Hey, you, dude with the stupid mustache. You think you look like Magnum P.I.? A 70s porn star called. He wants his mustache back. Hey, you, kid with the ugly shirt. Are you colorblind? Your shirt is about to give me a seizure. I mean, I'm a clown, and even I wouldn't touch something that garish. Hey, you, ugly old lady with the hairy mole. Or is it your parasitic twin? Whatever it is, I hope you bought a separate ticket. Cause if it's big enough to ride the roller coaster by itself, it's not freeloading in my audience. You will be forever sorry for what you've just said. I curse you to never be able to remove your makeup and to roam these circus grounds until the end of time. He went on for another two hours, insulting everyone he could. Some people laughed because they thought it was funny, but most laughed because they were uncomfortable, and laughing is the best way to hide from the embarrassment of others. But after the show, in his dressing room, there wasn't gonna be any laughter. Ha! I killed tonight! One of my best shows ever! I hope that ugly old lady with a curse breaks a hip on the way home. Now to get this makeup off, Hop on my private jet and go see my mistress, Cindy, in Aspen. Yeah. What the? F
This makeup isn't coming off. You old lady. You up the you come on. As much as he tried, his makeup wouldn't come off. That old lady wasn't just any old lady. She was Madame Morena, mistress of the dark arts. When she curses you, it's not an empty threat. Something Ransom was just now finding out. This makeup of that old my lady! Ransom, I've got some bad news. What do you want, you bald, greedy little Can't you see I'm having a problem? Grab a tissue and some rubbing alcohol and help me, you Your private jet crashed while trying to land. Your wife found out about your mistress, and she's taking everything you own except the house in Aspen. There was a fire in Aspen, and your house burned to the ground. The toy and doll licensing deal is dead, and they're suing you for breach. And one more thing. I quit. What? And go beep yourself. And that's why Ransom the Clown is such a creep. And you should go arrest him for murder. That's an interesting story. We'll go check up on him. Looks awful. Not like the New York dogs I'm used to. I'll have one of these hot dogs. Good choice, honey. We're trying to move him out. Let me get that for you. Eat up, hon, while it's still hot. That is the worst hot dog I've ever eaten. I, uh, gotta go. <sighs> I feel better now. Hello, Reno. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is uh, uh, quite annoying. No, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, they will be taken care of. Yes, sir. Permanently. Oh, yes, sir. Violently. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, wrestling was quite good tonight. Goodbye, sir. Lots of super-absorbent paper on this roll. Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I... Hi there, I'm Quickie Pal Leonard. How can I help you? I'm Special Agent Ray. Uh, I'm not holding if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> Do you know anything about the body by the river? No, but I heard the sheriff nearly ralphed when he saw it. The only bods I've seen lately are the righteous babes at the top shelf of the magazine rack. I'm not surprised the only women you see naked are in magazines. Have you seen anyone acting suspiciously around town? Actually, now you mention it, I did see something suspicious a couple of nights ago. I was on the late shift getting ready to close up and grab some za when Willie the town bum walks in. Was totally whack when I think about it. Why did Willie seem suspicious to you? Well, normally we have to toss him out because the dude smells grody and he never has any money. But for the first time in forever, Bro pulls out this wallet and flashes a fat stack of dead presidents. I thought it was kind of bitching when he bought out the liquor cabinet. 
Could the wallet you saw have belonged to Willie? <laughs> oh, no way. That wallet was his. I figured he got lucky and found it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But come to think of it, I'm pretty sure the wallet had some weird red stains on it. At the time, I thought it was the cherry mouthwash he drinks, but it could have been blood. So, what's your deal, Leonard? Dude, how do you know my name? Are you, like, telepathic or something? No, you just told me your name, and it's also on your name tag. Do you like your job here at the Quickie Pal? Heck yeah! I got a freaking sweet deal here, with free coffee and minimum wage. Plus, I don't get many customers on the late shift, so I get plenty of time to think. You said you get a lot of time to think. I'm like an abstract thinker, way ahead of the curve, man. My mom says I should be more like my cousin Bernard, who got a scholarship to MIT. But why be like that dweeb when I could be like Chuck Edmund? Tell me about Chuck. He's my freaking hero, man. Dude never went to college, just started building his machines when he was a kid. That guy made this town rich just by doing what he loved. You seem to really admire Chuck. That's why I dropped out of high school. I don't want to live my life for the man like some peon in a polyester cage. No offense. Offense taken. These flickering lights are going to drive me insane. <laughs> yeah, it's a trip, isn't it? Oh, they're even better if you get a little toked up and, uh, <laughs> I mean, yes, officer, I'll get those fixed right away. I need you to hand over the security tape. Oh, no can do, broski. We only have one Betamax tape here at the Quickie Pal, and the boss man would freak if I gave it away. If I lose it, my ass is grass. Why do you have a Betamax player? We have one sweet, cutting-edge Betamax player here. We don't want to be stuck with a piece of obsolete technology when VHS bites the big one. Gotta invest in the superior tech, dude. I'm going to look around your store. Take it. It was a sample from a traveling animal repellent salesman. But I doubt if it actually works. I wouldn't want to find out. It's a dime. What can I do for you, honey? What's up with the sheriff? He's kind of weird Reno. Yeah, he's kind of a nut job, but nothing compared to the coroner. This whole town has gotten downright weird in the last few years. Cuckooville. The coroner and the sheriff are the same person. Well, there might be some resemblance around the eyes, but that's about it. The sheriff does this annoying a Reno thing, and the coroner does an annoying a who. It pretty much proves they're not the same person. How does speech prove they're not the same person? You're asking a lot of questions that probably shouldn't be asked. I'm a federal agent. That's my job. I've said too much already. What's up with this town? Most of the stores are abandoned. Used to be the center of culture in the Tri-County area. Parties every night at the hotel. Celebrities visit the Edmund Mansion mansion. It was hard to not make money in those days. Of course, this was before my time. 
And since the pillow factory burnt down, the town is drying up faster than Dave's sex drive. Ain't that right, Dave? Thanks for your help. We'll be back if we have any more questions. Anytime. Hmm, I'll have one of these hot dogs. Good choice, honey. We're trying to move them out. Let me get that for you. Eat up, hon, while it's still hot. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Okay. That is the worst hot dog I've ever eaten. I, um, gotta go. Blah, blah. I feel better now. That looks like Agent Ray's notebook. I hope she's okay. where we can talk. Alrighty now. Um, based on your sign, I was kind of expecting this place to be a bakery. Sorry about that, hon. This used to be Ricky's Cakes, but now we sell vacuum tubes. Sounds like an interesting turn of events. Anyway, I'm Special Agent Reyes. I have some questions for you. Oh, pleased to meet you. I'm Ricky Lee, and I'm the proprietor of this little store. What can I do for you, hon? Since you don't sell cakes anymore, what's your store called now? Not really sure. I've been bouncing a few ideas around since the pivot. I don't suppose you have any suggestions. Tubular Tubes. Oh, that's a great name. I'm so lucky you wandered in today. The kindness of strangers is amazing. Glad I could help. I'm looking for a tube. We have lots of tubes here, over 3,000 different makes and models. Do you know the two-letter model identifier? And what is the make number? Oh, did one of the Hydrant Tron tubes burn out again? Oh, yes. The Pigeon Brothers need one right away. Okay, I'll put it on the town's account. I'll get one for you, hun. You just wait right there. I'll be back before you know it. Here you go. Give the pigeons my regards. The doors are locked, and nobody's inside. Excuse me, ma'am. My, 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 what do we have here? I'm sorry, ma'am. I don't pay for affection. <laughs> Sweetie, I'm not a hooker. Although, there is something about a man in federally mandated polyester that makes me want to forget my wedding vows. I'm Lenore Edmund Mulch, of the famed Pillowtronics Edmund family, and I'm waiting for my husband and son to arrive on the bus. Tell me about Pillowtronics. Pillowtronics was the brainchild of my uncle, the great entrepreneur and genius inventor Chuck Edmund. The Edmonds made this town great when we opened the Pillow Factory. My family, even my stupid little sister Dolores, might as well be royalty as far as Thimbleweed Park is concerned, sweetie. Tell me more about Pillowtronics. I heard he closed down because of a fire. Yes, yes, yes. An incompetent security guard ruined our family legacy with his negligence. But let's talk about something more pleasant. Did you know the security guard at Pillowtronics? You're asking an awful lot of questions about this fire, sweetie. I... Um... Now play nice and ask me something fun, Agent Cutie Pants. Do you know anything about the body by the river? Oh, sweetie. Yes, yes, yes. So glad someone is finally getting rid of it. But one does hear things, and I do have an inkling of who might be connected to this nasty business. 
Tell me who you think is connected to the body. Well, I hate to cast aspersions, but I suppose it is for the good of the town. Tell me what you know. Actually... No, I can't do this. The Edmund reputation is at stake. Ma'am, please tell me what you know. Fine, it was my sister Dolores. She abandoned our family and the business to become a... Flooring inspector? No, 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 no. It was far worse. She became... a video game developer. It all started a few years back. She only wanted one thing, to be a game designer for that awful game company. Mucus phlegm. Uncle Chuck wanted something else for her, but no. She was too selfish. Only wanted to make stupid adventure games. I've got to get out of this town. Uncle Chuck wants me to program his factory computers, but I just want to design games. I wish I could get a job at a company like Mucus Phlegm Games. Now the only thing I have to look forward to is my favorite computer magazine. In fact, I should check the mailbox and see if it's arrived yet. It's Graphics Basic, the powerful programming language from Hessware to supercharge my Commodore 64. It says it's by Ron Gilbert and Tom McFarlane. It's the math trophy I won when I was 12 and attending a summer program at Thomas Bodeman's School of Mathematics. It's made out of solid pewter, except for the infinity symbol, which is pure titanium. See, this printer ribbon looks all dried out. It won't print anything. Uncle Chuck is too cheap to buy ribbons, so he just re-inks the old one. It doesn't last for... Franklin, you idiot! I'm just trying to, you know, help. Is that yelling? Oh, gag me. I hope my dad and Uncle Chuck aren't fighting again. And since most of the machinery at the pillow factory is lying fallow, I've come up with this, you know, great plan to repurpose them. We can use them to make, you know, plush toys. Franklin, you idiot! The company is Pillowtronics, not stupid plush toy-tronics. We make pillows! What do you think that would do to our credibility, our reputation? O okay, Chuck, you're right, but um, I was up all night working on the business plan. Maybe uh, you could just, you know, look at it? No, no, no! It's a pillow factory! Are you two fighting again? I'm getting so sick of this. You're brothers. Take a chill pill. You started the Pillow Factory together. Won't you ever stop fighting about it? Nothing you need to worry about, Dolores. Uh, right, Franklin, old brother? Ah, yes. You know, your uncle and I were just, uh, you know, talking business. I have some work to do. Dolores, can you get my .8mm point-tip soldering iron? You know, Uncle Chuck, you should use a 2mm flat tip, and you never heat your solder hot enough. <laughs> That's my favorite niece. I can't wait for you to take over the pillow factory. I know you'll keep the Edmund pillow dream alive. If it weren't for my monthly computer magazine, being here would totally suck. Look, Uncle Chuck. Dolores, you know how busy I am right now. Maybe your father would be interested. Hello, my favorite niece. You should be nicer to my father. He just wants to help. Franklin is well-meaning, I will give you that. But he just doesn't have the same passion and vision for pillows that you and I have. Hmm... I just wanted to say how much I love you, Uncle Chuck. I love you too, Dolores. I can't wait for you to take over the pillow factory and restore the family heritage.
The label says it's called Cat 509 Tales, produced by getdigital.eu. It's Uncle Chuck's check register. I guess that makes it a Chuck register. Hmm. Uncle Chuck is always very touchy about this painting. Wonder why? Seems like the mail sh Carefully handling broken glass? If this were a Sierra Online graphic adventure, I'd be dead now. But those Mucus Phlegm adventure games treat their players much better. No arbitrary deaths just to extend gameplay? Sure would like to work there. There's nothing inside. 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 There's nothing inside except an empty glass. There's nothing inside. It's a gas can. Don't get your hopes up, though. Can't wait to check the mailbox. Hi there, George. I was just about to check the mail. Great timing. You still around, Dolores? Thought you'd have left this podunk of a town by now. Yes, hopefully soon. I'm looking for a job at a game company in the big city. That's not gonna make your Uncle Chuck happy. He'll just have to deal with it. What brings you all the way out here? I have your special magazine here. Oh, I've been waiting for that. Thank you. Sure, it's what we dedicated government employees do. Walk all the way out into the country to deliver a magazine. It's Bite Me World, the best computer magazine ever. Wow, an ad for a job at Mucus Phlegm Games, my favorite game company. This clock looks vaguely familiar. Maybe more highly rendered and smoother pendulum action. It's my state-of-the-art Commodore 64. I'm dialing the mucus phlegm modem number. It's connecting. I can't believe my computer is connected to mucus phlegm. Welcome to the new online mucus phlegm job application program. Just fill out your personal information and answer a few simple mucus programming questions. Then print out the application and send it to Mucus Phlegm. We'll get back to you in exactly five days. What is your name? Thank you. What is your address? Noted. Next, what's your programming language of choice? The language you are most proficient in. Very ambitious. We like that. Please answer the following questions about our proprietary mucus programming language. You must get all of the questions right to submit your application. First question, how many actors can be displayed at one time? It'd be better to find some reference book on mucus before I answer these. I need to go find a book about mucus programming. Just down the hall. It says there's a book on mucus here. It's in section 3.1. Hi again, George. It's not like a government employee to make a mistake, but I forgot to deliver this important letter for your Uncle Chuck. He's busy in his workshop and can't be disturbed. I'll take it for him. Okay, Dolores, here it is. And remember, it's illegal to open someone else's mail. Punishable by a $50,000 fine and or five years in jail. Thanks, George. That's good to know. Okay, back to my vitally important government job. It's a letter to my Uncle Chuck. 
This is Uncle Chuck's Indextron 3000 library. Hmm, it says there's a book on mucus here. It's in section 3.1. It says, out of order. No one will miss this. The out of order sign is gone, so it's obviously fixed. Haven't been up here for a long time. This is depressing. Chucky's been in our family for years. He's a good plant. Uncle Chuck never should have talked to you like that. He's right. My idea was worthless. I'm worthless. Dad, I don't like to see you like this. I liked your idea for the pillow factory. Chuck thought it was a bad idea. He's right. He's never even read it. You need more confidence and stop letting Uncle Chuck push you around. Thanks, Dolores. You're a great daughter. But Chuck knows what is best for the factory. Bye, Dad. I love you. Goodbye, Dolores. Uncle Chuck, I have something for you. What is it, Dolores? A letter George the Postman just delivered. Oh, I've been expecting this. I'll deal with it later. Uncle Chuck is too cheap to buy ribbons, so he just re-inks the old one. Hello, my favorite niece. I just wanted to say how much I love you, Uncle Chuck. I love you too, Dolores. I can't wait for you to take over the pillow factory and restore the family heritage. It's my state it's my state of the art Commodore 64 with dual 1541 floppy drives and a blazingly fast 1200 baud modem. Please answer the following questions about our proprietary mucus programming language. You must get all of the questions right to submit your application. First question, how many actors can be displayed at one time? Next question, what type of files are compiled scripts packed into? Next question. When a game ships, it is encrypted using... Next question. How many parameters can functions take? Thank you for taking the Mucus Phlegm programming test. Congratulations, you passed the Mucus Phlegm programming test. Yay! I answered all the mucus questions correctly. I'm ready to print out the application. Oh, the Printron 3000's printer ribbon isn't installed. I can't use the printer ribbon with that. Yay! I answered all the mucus questions correctly. I'm ready to print out the application.
Hmm, I printed my job application, but the page is blank. Maybe the printer is out of ink. Hello, my favorite niece. Uncle Chuck, do you have any new printer ribbons? You know I don't buy new ribbons, I just re-ink them myself. Printer ink is a scam. I didn't get rich by wasting money. Just get some polycyclic hydrocarbons along with methyl ethyl ketone and make the ink like I showed you. Of course. Thanks, Uncle Chuck. Hello, my favorite niece. How do I make printer ink? Printer ink is a scam. Make your own, like I showed you. And if you really want to do it cheaply, just get some ash and gasoline and mix well. Of course. Thanks, Uncle Chuck. The ink bottle is now mostly full with gas. doesn't seem to work. I'm not going to drink from something without reading the label. Flask of Extreme Chili Sauce by Brian H.J. Comes with a warning. You might breathe fire. Great. Now I'm carrying around a handful of black soot. The ink bottle is now full of black ink. That should do it. The ribbon is now fully inked. There! The blank paper is back in the Printron 3. Yay! I answered all the mucus questions correctly. I'm ready to print out the application. I always like to watch this part. Now I just need to stamp the envelope. It's my job application of mucus phlegm. It's a letter to my Uncle Chuck. As expected, the post office's poorly programmed auto stamp cancellation machine has failed again. Am The glass is now filled with water. My letter to Mucus Phlegm is now stamped and ready to mail. Dig in! How exciting! I hope I get the job. Dolores, I have a letter for you. Oh! 
Good luck. See ya. Diggin? Diggin. It's a letter from Mucus Phlegm. Did I get the job? I think I want to open this in my room, just in case it's really bad news. Digging in the... Hi, Doug. What are you digging? All right, Dolores. I'm just digging stuff in the front green. Mostly holes. But then I buries them again, all neat and tidy. Okay, Doug. You're doing a good job. Ta, Dolores! Now that I'm in my room, I'm still so scared to open it. Okay, but if it's a no, that means I'm stuck in Thimbleweed Park and have to take over the pillow factory. Okay, but if it's a yes, what will become of Dad, stuck here alone with Uncle Chuck? Okay, but... Okay, okay, I'm opening it. Yes! It's a job offer from Mucus Phlegm to be a game programmer. I'm so excited. Can't wait to tell Uncle Chuck. He'll be so proud. But first... Uncle Chuck! Uncle Chuck! Great news! Yes, Dolores, what is it, my dear future leader of Pillotronics? I, uh... Here, read this. You're what? You're giving up the opportunity to run Pillotronics to be, uh... To be a game programmer? Yes, that's what I've always wanted to do. Not run Pillowtronics. I'm leaving on the first bus out of Thimbleweed Park. Then, Dolores, you are out of my will. You're giving up over $10 million. That's $20 million in 2017 dollars. Just to pick an arbitrary date in the future, you are dead to me. Dolores broke Uncle Chuck's heart and started programming those murder simulators. Real life murder is the next logical step for her, sweetie. Stop her before she schemes her way into sweet Uncle Chuck's inheritance. Sure, we'll get right on that. Come back and see me soon, sweetie. Ciao. Here's your WC-67 too. Thank you. Oh, fixed. Here's our card in case you need any more plumbing help. We'll just clean up here and be gone soon. Hmm. I haven't seen Agent Ray for a while. Wonder what happened to her.
Welcome to the Thimbleweed Nickel. Eight years of experience and two degrees in journalism tells me you're a Fed. I guess nothing gets by the press. You spend as much time as I have dealing with law enforcement. You get a second sense of this stuff. Plus the cheap suits. Mm, mostly the cheap suits. We're here investigating the murder. Know anything? Not much. Just what I heard over the police scanner. Body found in the river. I'll send my best reporter to check it out in the morning. Know who my best reporter is? Ugh, you... If this damn town wasn't such a podunk, I'd have a couple of Pulitzers by now. Do you offer home delivery? Why? You plan on moving here? The town's got a charm to it. We'll need a complete press blackout. Not with the First Amendment still in place. The core of a strong democracy is a strong press. What's the deal with your sheriff? Seems kind of oddorino. He is an oddball, but eh, so is everyone around here. And it's only gotten worse since Chuck died. Don't you mean the Fifth Amendment? Nope. That sets out rules for indictment by grand jury in eminent domain and protects the right to due process. Chuck Edmund? Chuck Edmund, the pillow magnet. He pretty much ran this town since the 50s and owns the giant pillow factory. Well, owned. He died a few days ago. His niece Dolores and her sister Lenore stand to inherit a fortune if they'll just stop fighting. What else do you know about Chuck? He started the pillow factory with his brother Franklin in the late 30s to make pillows for the war effort. Pillows win wars was their slogan. The factory and Chuck were the center of the thimbleweed social scene of the 50s. Go on. Chuck invested millions in automation and became an expert in AI. Agricultural investment? Artificial intelligence. Uh, computers that can think? He started automating the whole town. People tell me it was like living in the future. That's one of his machines over there. The Copytron 3000. Then... What? The big pillow factory fire happened and killed several workers, and the whole place was shut down. Many blame the fire on over-automation and computer error. But I think Chuck manipulated the sheriff, and it was blamed on the security guard on duty at the time. But it was too late. Chuck was disgraced, and the factory's been closed for years. A dark shell of abandoned machinery. What do you know about the pillow factory security guard? Not much. He died in the fire and was blamed for the whole thing. But I have my doubts. I just need some evidence, and I can finish my big story and expose the whole thing. What do you know about the pillow factory fire? I have my suspicions of a big cover-up arena, if you know what I mean. I've tried to gather evidence, but I've been blocked at every turn. It's a small town, so I have to watch the feathers I ruffle. Nice chatting. Got a murder to solve. It's a sticky tape dispenser. It says, for government use only. Violators will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Excuse me. Be with you in a second. I'm pretty swamped right now. How can I help? I'm a federal agent. Know anything about the body out by the bridge? You're a federal agent? I work for Uncle Sam, too. As one government agent to another, I'll do what I can to assist. Do you know anything about the body out by the bridge? No, everyone in town is still collecting their mail as usual. No one from my route is missing, and I would definitely notice if they were. I mean, not to brag, but I did consider joining the feds. It's just not as prestigious or as challenging as postal work. Know any good postal jokes? Oh, you bet I do. Why are postal workers such great comedians? They have a special delivery, huh? <laughs> Get it? <laughs> Good one. Why is there so much mail to sort when the town seems deserted? That's classified information. As a federal agent, you should know it's my duty to uphold the privacy and the sanctity of the mail. 
Unless it pertains to an investigation and you have all the necessary paperwork, I can't help you. Who is all this mail addressed to? I can't tell you. It would be a federal crime. I would assume you knew that, being a federal employee and all. Or is this some sort of sting to catch crooked mail clerks? Because I keep things ship shape here in the Thimbleweed branch, so there's no need to worry about us here. Thanks for your help. We'll be back if we have any more questions. Anytime. That tape is for official government business only. But since you're a Fed, just go easy. We're almost out of it. Go easy on the tape. We're almost out. It's an empty roll of tape. You got any, uh, second-hand crystals? I'm a federal agent, and I have some questions for you. What's that in your pocket? Looks like a wallet. I don't have a wallet. I'm a bum. You really want to play this game? <laughs> Maybe I'm just happy to see you. It's in plain sight. I don't even need a warrant to just take it. It's mine. Finders keepers. Ah, so you do in fact admit there is something in your pocket. Well, um... Well, I can't give it to you. What would I put my money in? I don't care. See? It's not so easy, is it, Hotshot? I've had enough. I'm a federal agent. Hand over the bloody wallet. Well, I may be a drunk bum, but I know my rights, and you need a warrant. Now look, you find me another wallet to keep all personals in, and this one is yours. It's coming apart anyway, not like those amazing Ransom the Clown wallets they used to sell before its career hit the skids. Now, Ransom was an adulterer, a cheat, and complete But he licensed good wallets. We'll play it your way, for now. You know anything about the body found by the bridge? A body? I thought that was a log wearing a suit. Do you know anything about the body or not? What body? I thought we were talking about a log. Do you know anything about the body or not? What body? I thought we were talking about a log. Where do you sleep at night? I have a premium bit of cardboard real estate in the nicest part of the sewers. I've had almost no gator attacks, and there's even a grate for ventilation, so my sewer lung is even better than ever. Tell me what you know about Chuck. Ah, the man was an ass, and I'm glad he died of a heart attack. He ruined my life over nothing. How did Chuck ruin your life? Mr. Edmund made sure I was blacklisted in Thimbleweed Park. My so-called friends turned their backs on me. My watch repair business mysteriously burnt down, and I lost everything. Couldn't get dinner reservations, let alone a job. In the end, all I had left of my old life was my beloved Stradivarius. Why did Chuck try to ruin you? I took his girlfriend out to see that lame insult clown one night. But in my defense, Chuck changed girlfriends more often than he changed shirts. Well, how was I supposed to know she was flavor of the month for the Pilotronic Playboy? We'll talk later. Don't leave town. Where would I go? You got any loose change? I... The future is never written. It's a book with a school on the cover. Ah, not just any book with a skull on the cover. It's the book of the dead. Take it if you wish. It's on the house. But beware! Beware of what? Huh, nothing. It just sounded ominous.
This head seems almost alive. I think I saw it move. Ugh, pretty disgusting head. There's a small name tag. Sep the Navigator's Head. Welcome to the Thimbleweed Park Occult Bookstore. I'm Madame Marina. Are you here for the hexes, the summer blowout sale, or... Or, uh, based on those suits you're wearing, my tax records? I don't get too many visits from suited and booted federal agents these days. I'm Agent Reyes. I'm just here to ask a few questions, ma'am. Well, all right then. How can I help? Do you know anything about the body by the river? I know everything that goes on around here. Great! So, you know who was involved in the murder? Okay, so I don't know everything right this minute. But if you're willing to get your hands a little dirty, I can find the answers you're looking for. What do you need to help us find the killer? I don't want to break agent protocol, but we really need a lead in this case. I need to go on a vision quest to find the answer. But I can't really reach out into the void without a little bit of... assistance? If you can get me an Agaricus Fungus Visionum Delectamentum Mushroom from the sewers, I might be able to help. Those don't sound legal. And your point is... Tell me about yourself, Madame Morina. There's not much to tell. I set up my shop in Thimbleweed after finessing my craft on the road for many years. After all, there's only so many nights you can vomit peyote and pull cactus needles out of your ass in the desert before it becomes old news. How did you get into the occult? Oh, I suppose when I realized I could get baked and make money doing it. I thought it was a serious spiritual practice. I don't know what to tell you, dear. I like tripping balls, and with the money I rake in from my curses, I'm gonna retire on a yacht in the Bahamas. Why did you set up shop here? The vibrations. This town has a dark and weird energy which makes it perfect for a cult business. Do you mean an energy like the signals I've been hearing about? No, no, no. Those signals sparking through the air lately are something else altogether. I don't know what they mean, but I know it isn't good. Goodbye. It looks pretty ratty. Thimbleweed Park Guided Tours? I need to stay focused and solve this murder so I can get on with my plan. An arm extended in friendship or supplication. Hmm, hard to tell. It's made of plastic. No murder here. Looks like someone knew I was going to get stuck down here. Unless my kidnapper wrote that as a trap. Only one way to find out, I guess. An empty coin return slot. Looks pretty dark down there. Wait, I see Agent Ray. Agent Ray, is that you? No, it's the Pope. The Vatican decided to take me on a tour of the sewers. Of course it's me, you idiot. Don't panic, Agent Ray. I'm not panicking. I said don't panic, Agent Ray. You need to conserve oxygen. I really don't. But believe me when I say, I'm doing as little breathing as possible down here. I have some great survival tips. I have a survival tip for you, Reyes. Oh, yeah? It's called... Zip it, and I won't punch you in the nuts when I get out of this sewer. 
Why are you in the sewer? Enjoying the sights and smells, practicing my sewer spelunking hobby, hunting for ninja turtles. Take your pick. You go spelunking? No, you moron. Someone attacked me when I was investigating the alley behind the diner. Are you sure you don't want to hear my survival tips? Fine. Lay one on me. My abuela always said, spray rodent repellent in your shoes if you want to keep rodents away from your shoes. That's the most obvious, stupid advice I've heard. No more tips from you, Reyes. Although I am starting to wish I hadn't traded that gopher repellent I had for a carrot cake. It was delicious, though. Have you looked around the sewers yet? Are you making a subtle suggestion there, Agent? No, ma'am. I'll go look around when I feel like it. Are you okay? Are you hurt? Do you need medical attention? I'm fine. I've woken up in worse states and in worse places than this. But usually there was tequila involved. Did you see who attacked you? I will have them arrested so fast their head will spin. No, they came at me from behind. It was lights out before I had a chance to turn around. But I'm guessing whoever it was doesn't like us poking around town. We'll make them pay for this, Agent Ray. Just as soon as we get you out of that sewer. I'll be back as soon as I can. Don't screw this up, Reyes. Stand back, Agent Ray. I'll drop you a dime. Whoa there, little agent of Reno. You can't just go bumbling around the county without a map. It's too easy to get lost. There is a killer Reno on the loose. I'm a federal agent. I can take care of myself. And a darn fine agent, I'm sure of. But we have laws around here, and everyone is required to have an official map. I'm a federal agent. I can take care of myself. And a darn fine agent, I'm sure of. But we have laws around here, and everyone is required to have an official map. A map? Seriously? Oh, yes, and not just any map, but an official map. And where would I find this official map? Well, the county is plumberino out of them. I guess this really messes up your investigation. I'm sure the head office will understand, Reno. Shall I mark the case as unsolved? Not a chance. The feds never give up. I see. Aren't there some donuts that need eating? Well, you got me there. Oh, those donuts aren't gonna eat themselves. But we have laws around here, and everyone is required to have an official map. Yeah. You're right. I'll head back to town and find a map. Ooh, donuts do sound good. Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help? There aren't any maps left. Sorry, little dude. The sheriff came by a bit ago and nabbed all the maps. Didn't even pay for them. Something about immature dominion or something like that. How can I help you? I'm Junior Special Agent Reyes. Uh, I'm not Holden, if that's what you're thinking. <laughs> can I take a look at that security tape? Oh. No can do, broski. We only have one Betamax tape here at the Quickie Pal, and the boss man would freak if I gave it away. If I lose it, my ass is grass. 
I'm going to look around your store. Help! I'm trapped in the sewer. Please call the authorities and let them know. You'll notify someone. Thanks. There's a dime in the coin return slot. I got an emergency call about someone being locked in the sewer. <laughs> I should have expected Reno it was you. I don't like being interrupted when wrestling is on. Bad news, Sheriff. There are no Donut Arenos down here. This case doesn't seem like something the feds would be interested in, hmm? Now you should head back to the home office arena before you get hurt. There is a killer on the loose. Yeah, I'll run that up the home office arena flagpole. In the meantime, can you get me out of here? Sure, just follow me. No, oh, I will need to blindfold you. Nothing about this town surprises me anymore. Oh, there's a bus leaving in a few hours. I think we can handle the investigation from here, Areno. It's a color copy Tron 3000. Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help you find anything? I found this bottle. I'd like five cents back for cleaning up the environment. Well, I'd like five cents from you for taking your bottle. <laughs> Just kidding. Quickie Pal humor. Here you go. It's a map of the Trithumbleweed Park County area. Please don't mess with the police scanner. I'm waiting for a call about a woman by the diner littering. Attention, all units! It's not much, but we're short a story on page four. I'll be back soon. color too.
Whoa there, little agent of Reno. Like I said before, you can't just go bumbling around the county without a map. I have an official map right here. Oh, I see. Well, uh, that looks legit a Reno. Hmm, odd. I thought I... Yeah, well, I guess the law is the law. I guess I'd better return all these maps to the quickie, pal. I feel like we're getting close to cracking this case. The only thing you're getting close to cracking is my patience with you. Let's work together and I can get on with my... I mean... We can get out of this town as quickly as possible. Agreed. We need to identify the body using the face tron with a photo of the body and the victim's photo ID. You mean like a driver's license or passport? Or Burger Shack loyalty card recognized around the world? We need a fingerprint match. Using the finger tron with a fingerprint from the murder weapon and an official fingerprint book. We need a blood match using the blood tron with a blood swap from the body and Willie's blood wallet. We need to talk to that crazy clown at the circus. He's got serial killer written all over him. Wouldn't it be quicker to just shoot him? We need to have a chat with the geeky programmer at the old mansion. There is something odd about her. Yeah, a woman with a brain. Definitely suspicious. Let's get cracking. <sighs> Whatever. It's a piece of sticky tape. Whatever. Keep your panties on! I'm coming! Whatever you're selling, I'm not buying. So take your dime store suit and good news pamphlets and stick them where the sun don't shine. Ransom the Clown? I heard you know about a body by the bridge. Jeez, no foreplay, Red? You don't beat around a bush, do you? Not my style. You can ask your questions, Toots, but I'm not saying I'll answer. What do you know about the body by the river? What body? Earlier this evening, we found a body down by the bridge. We're investigating, and I was told you might have some information for me. Nah, I heard some sirens before, but I figured they were headed for the mansion mansion. That's where most of the f***ed up stuff happens. What weird stuff do you know about at the mansion? You want to find out about the mansion mansion? You're gonna have to talk to some other idiot. I keep to myself and the town folk leave me the f alone, thank you. I'm not about to rock the boat. I don't pay rent here and I can't go anywhere else after my next wife took me for everything I had. We heard you don't get along with the locals. Given my creepy clown face and Paul Champ for abusive name calling, it's not made me a popular community figure. No. But I don't need the validation of these small town losers. I'm Ransom the Clown. I was on the Tonight Show. I'm great. What do you know about Chuck? Chuck? As in Chuck, my factory is too good to make toys, Edmund? Didn't know the pompous well myself, but I knew his brother Franklin. Weedy guy, total scared to stand up to his big brother, even though the family business was in the crapper. How do you know Franklin Edmund? We were supposed to go into business together. My act was about to go bigger than Jesus. I was a hit on The Tonight Show. I was on my way to the top, 
so we figured why not cash in with a little merchandising. Franklin wanted to get the pillow factory into making toys, so it seemed like a good fit. What kind of toys were you planning to make with Franklin? Geez, how do you get by in life without brains or beauty? Isn't it obvious? We were gonna make Ransom the Clown insult dolls. Would have been great if Franklin hadn't bailed on me and gone missing before we signed the contracts. I could have been rich by now if that little toady had grown a backbone. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back. Whatever, Red. Not like I'm going anywhere, but you're not getting inside without a warrant. I need to stay focused and solve this murder so I can do what I need to do. Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help you find anything? It's a revolving door. You're investigating here, too? I wouldn't go in there if I were you. What do you mean? Why shouldn't I go in? Because you're probably superstitious and would believe all that claptrap about paranormal activity in the hotel. Paranormal? What nonsense. My thoughts exactly. What are you doing here? Well, Chuck's brother Franklin went missing a few weeks ago. Is he the body by the bridge? Nope. But this reporter's no says there's something odd about the whole thing. I'm working up a story, but the only lead I have is someone seeing him here briefly a few weeks ago. He was seen around the lobby area. Then he just vanished. Big day today. I'm meeting some promising investors. I know they'll believe in my plan to turn the dying pillow factory into a highly profitable stuffed toy factory. It can't fail. Just gotta check into a room without Chuck knowing about it. He has eyes and ears everywhere. I'll need a disguise. Also need to copy this prospectus so I can give it to the investors and keep my copy. Chuck wouldn't know a good idea if it hit him. Stuffed toys of the future. What luck finding some investors. What's that jacket you're wearing? The latest and greatest jacket. It zips in the front. Don't most jackets do that? <sighs> you're too old to understand. What's on your face? They're the latest and greatest nose glasses from the Jason the News Guy adventure game from Mucus Flem Games. With these on, no one knows who I am. What's on your feet? The latest and greatest Reeboks. I just got them. Aren't they rad? What's with all the latest and greatest? I'm not grody like you. Everyone knows that unless you've got the latest and greatest, you might as well barf. I'm not risking my reputation by touching anything that's not like the latest and greatest. What if I said you didn't have the latest and greatest stuff? <laughs> like barf me out. All my stuff is totally the latest and the greatest. Your jacket is not the latest and greatest. Yeah, right. I'm so sure. Your glasses are not the latest and greatest. These glasses have got to be the latest and greatest, aren't they? Did something newer come out? <laughs> nah, you're wigging. I can't trust a dweeb like you. I would totally know what was the latest and greatest. Oh, yeah? I bet you don't know anything about what's the greatest right now in 1987. Prove you're not just an old dweeb from the 50s. Sure, I can prove it. I'm totally bodacious because I can talk like you and... I've got a fly homie who... Get real! 
I'm like totally stopping you right there. No one who's tight would talk like that. No way do you know what's rad right now, poser. I would totally know what was the latest and greatest. Oh yeah? I bet you don't know anything about what's the greatest right now in 1987. Prove you're not just an old dweeb from the 50s. Sure, I can prove it. I'm totally bodacious because I can talk like you and... I've got a groovy friend who... Get real! I'm like totally no one who... No way! I would... Oh yeah? Prove you... Sure, I... I know some peeps who... Get real! No one... No... I would... Oh yeah? Prove... Sure. I know this gnarly dude who... was on MTV and... tells me what's wicked and what'll gag me with a spoon. Whoa! You're legit! I totally believe you know what's tight right now. When you've got something new and sick, I'll trade you. Until then, I'm gonna rock out. Ah, oh, don't you just love this- It's a pillow bear prototype. Turn the plush bear inside out and you get a plush pillow. Kids will love the orange pillow bear. Want this mm. bear? Guess you can't hear me. Hey, dude, what's your damage? Dude, check out this rad new pillow bear. It's righteous. Big time righteous. I'll do you a favor and trade you. You'd do that for me? Oh, sick. Ooh, what do you want to trade? I'll trade you the bear for your glasses. No faking. Gag me. Your glasses totally make you look like a dweeb. No, duh. Eh, take the glasses then. Quick, before anyone notices I have them. First, here's my used gum for your collection. Uh, I don't have a gum collection. Uh, never mind that. Now give me that bear so I rock it out. Sure, or dweeb dude, or gnarlicious, or... I can't keep this up. Let's get this over with. Here it is. Sweet! Your ace. Later, dude. It's gross pre-chewed gum. If I'm not careful, it will stick everything in my inventory together. The hotel manager is right there. He's one of Chuck's spies. I'd better not change into my disguise while he's near. Nobody can recognize me now with this foolproof disguise. It's my precious, dazzling four-page... Welcome to the Edmond Hotel, most beautiful hotel abu in the Tri-Thimbleweed Park County area. How may I be a boo of service? Do you have photocopying here? But of course we do, Abu. Abu, Abu, Abu. That is to say, we normally do, but uh, we've run out of paper, Abu. Unless I get more paper, Abu, I won't be able to help you out. I need to get something photocopied. I still don't have enough paper, Abu, to do photocopying. I'm going to look at my, I mean, your beautiful lobby. Goodbye. Have a nice evening, Abu.
Welcome back to the Edmund Hotel. How may I be a boo of service? Could you use this as photocopying paper? That should be all the paper, Abu, I need. Well, what would you like to photocopy? This prospectus document. Sure thing, Abu. Well, that's all I need. I'll be back in a jiffy, Abu. One task done. Now I should check into a room to prepare for the meeting. Welcome back to the Edmund Hotel. How may I be a boo of service? I'd like to check in. Okay, sir. What's your name, Abu, for the booking? George Michael. Of course, Mr. Michael. We have a lovely suite, Abu, for you on the 12th floor. Your suite has been fitted with the new state-of-the-art Abu Hotel Tron 3000. It's such new technology, Abu, that we're still fitting out the rooms on the 10th floor. How else may I be Abu of service? Is there any surveillance in the hotel? No, certainly not, Mr. Michael. Oh, we have our state-of-the-art Abu Hotel Tron 3000 system, which creates a VHS video of your entire stay with us. Sounds like surveillance to me. How much, you ask? For just $19.99, you get a unique record of your trip highlights to share with friends Abu back home. It's such a new system that we're still installing it on the 10th Abu floor. Since you won't want to miss a second of your amazing Abu stay here, we recommend that guests do not visit the 10th floor. I'm going to look at my, I mean, your beautiful lobby. Goodbye. Have a nice evening, Abu. It's the key card for my room. Hello? Yes, only on Tuesdays. Yes, I'm almost ready for our meeting. I've just got to wrap up a couple more things. I'll call you back when I'm ready. What's that monstrosity? A Hoteltron. Chuck must have had them installed recently. I'll have to find a way to stop it recording my meeting. Waiting. What was that? I guess it was nothing. Looks like the Tron machines are working perfectly. No reaction. Perfect. Now Chuck will have no idea what I do in my meeting. I'm finally ready for that meeting. Better give the investors a call to let them know they can come up. You can come up to my room now. I'm ready. Back to being plain old Franklin. That was quick. Oh, it's you. How did you know I was here? Franklin was never seen again. I asked the sheriff for more information, but there was nothing. No body, no Franklin. Some of the more superstitious types claim he's haunting this hotel. But those of us dedicated to fact-finding know that must be poppycock. That's an interesting story. So Franklin's dead as well? No one knows for sure if he's dead. Isn't it a great time to be a journalist in Thimbleweed Park? One missing, a mystery body, and Chuck died of a heart attack. Did you find out the identity of the body in the river yet? We're not telling the press anything until his family is notified. Respectable feds? Interesting development. But you didn't answer my original question. Why are you here? I see I can't fool you. If you ever want to switch professions, we need reporters like you. That still doesn't answer my question about why you're here. Okay, okay! I was following up on a report that Franklin checked in here under a pseudonym. Finally. 
A pseudonym. What was it? All I could find out is that a man with a large nose was seen around the same time as Franklin. And? That man checked in under the name George Michael. So it may not have been Chuck's brother. What room did the man with a large nose check into? It was a room on the 12th floor. I couldn't find out anything more without a shiny official badge like you have. Why is it so hard to get information from you? Let's call it a job interview. <sighs> As I've said, I need good reporters so I don't have to run all over the county. I don't have time to be a newspaper reporter. Fair enough, but you know where to find me. Thanks for all the information. See you later. If you find out anything publishable, stop by the Nickel to let me know. That's a rare first edition of my fantastic comic book. Come back here. Hey! Stop! Damn broken window. It's Lil Beeper, my pet hamster. It's broken, but what kind of crazy would microwave a hamster? Not even I would stoop that low. That's just my eviction notice. It's a stack of eviction notices. <laughs> like that sheriff is really gonna drag me to court. It's an attempted delivery notice. Package held at Thimbleweed Park Post Office for Ransom the Clown. I'm not gonna search the circus for you, Ransom. George the Postman. Well, f you, Georgie. You late. Got the page stuck back into the joke book. Got the page stuck back into the joke. Got the page. It's my joke book, but there's one page missing. That's as far to the left I can move it. They'll have to push it to move it to the right. F you! I'm not gonna jump on that without a spotter. Safety first. I won't pick up some greasy, disgusting, inedible piece of popcorn if I can't put it in something. I don't want to pick that up. Well, that's one. Lil Beeper loves this crap. Okay, two. I can count. Am I really gonna pick the rats having more fun at this than I am? Not even half full yet. This almost half full. Half full now. This is taking too long. At this rate, it'll be 1988. This is gonna take forever. Where's the rat taking the popcorn? Where's the rat taking the popcorn? Nothing to pick up here. It's a full bag of popcorn! There's an inch thick layer of dust. It's my empty ramp. There's nothing inside but a cup. Of 
Here you go, little beeper. Enjoy your crap. So much for better. Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help you find anything? Dude, can you score me some more of that clown blend? I don't think so, kid. I need to be responsible for the death of your last two working brain cells. I know a chimp who could do this job better than you, face. He's more articulate, too. Dude, no way! Next time, send the chimp, cause me wanna see. You! You know you're not welcome in here, Ransom. Tell it to someone that cares. Just order your food and get lost. Give me a greasy crap burger with extra heart attack. We're not serving hamburgers until our hot dogs are gone. Now get lost. I'll have one of those disgusting hot dogs. Knock yourself out with those hot dogs. We're trying to move them before... Well, I hope you choke on it. Nom, nom, nom. This tastes like crap, and I ought to know. I, uh, gotta go. <sighs> I feel better now. Hey, George, you lazy I want to pick up my package. Let me see that. Okay, one moment. And next time, deliver it to me in person. What do you think I pay my tax dollars for? You haven't paid your taxes in years. What do you think sorts all outgoing mail? Well, you. There's a note inside. Dear Mr. Clown, we hereby return your defective samples. The wallet seems to be made out of a rare endangered species of bird, and the candy dispenser sparks whenever you use it. Please do not contact us again. What a bunch of wads. Buy me some kombucha? I have a brand new wallet that no one wants. Oh, Ransom the Clown wallet. Thanks. Here's my old one. What am I gonna do with this piece of... Buy me a drink? I need to stay focused and solve this murder so I can... your eyeballs off it. It's an instant camera, but there's no film in it. <laughs> Thanks.
That worked. I have a blood sample. It's working. The paper is drying out. It's covered with the dead body's blood. Welcome to the Edmund Hotel. Most beautiful hotel abu in the Tri-Thimbleweed Park County area. How may I be a boo of service? Hello, Sheriff. Why are you moonlighting as the hotel manager? Oh, Abu, uh, I'm not the sheriff. I'm the hotel manager. Uh, the sheriff says that annoying Areno thing all the time. You'll never hear me doing that, Abu. Sure. Whatever. Is anything going on in the hotel today? Nothing, Abu. Certainly not more cases of food poisoning. Definitely not, Abu. Do you know what happened to Franklin Edmund? Huh, I saw him, but I don't know, Abu, what happened to him. Funny thing, Abu, though. Go on. That same day, a man with a large nose, Abu, checked in and then disappeared. You don't say. That is an Otterino coincidence. What room did he check into? Oh, let me see, Abu, now. It was a Mr. George Michael. Sounds legit. He checked into a room, Abu, on the 12th floor. I'd like that room key for our investigation. I'm not sure I should do that without a warrant, Abu. But since there's nothing to see there, I suppose, Abu, I can give it to you. Thank you. Finally. How else may I be Abu of service? I'm going to check out your, um, interesting lobby. Goodbye. Have a nice evening, Abu. Gum appears to be the only evidence that Franklin was ever in this room. What was all that about? Why couldn't they see me? I'm dead? Hmm. Well, I guess that's probably what I deserve. About time you joined us in the land of the almost dead. Who are you? I'm Xavier, the head ghost, and I'm in charge of the ghosts. I run a tight ship. Everyone must pull their weight or face the penalties. What do you mean, pull their weight? Don't ask. Time to update the schedule for everyone to follow. Clara, you're on elevator duty. Don't let anyone get to the penthouse. I was just on elevator duty. No arguing. Now, Virgil, you're on front door duty. Don't let anyone in or out of the hotel. It's about time the living started realizing who's really in charge around here. That doesn't seem right. That's irrelevant. New ghost, you're going to scare at least two people who tried to use the drinking fountain in the lobby. Okay, everyone to work. What are you waiting for, Clara? By the way, your brother died. Chuck's dead? When did that happen? I'm free of Chuck's tyranny. That is, I know he would have come here to tell me off if he could. I wonder why this head ghost seems so bossy. I've got to scare someone? Hmm. Maybe I have special powers. That tickles. Also surprisingly easy. The elevator isn't on this floor. job 
scaring someone in the lobby instead of talking to me. You don't want to make Xavier. Just the drinking, Abu Fountain. As long as it's not something serious, Abu, then I won't have to call our plumbers. Not bad. Now you need to find someone else to scare. Then you'll have met your daily quota. I have to get back to work now. How long are you on door duty for? Until Xavier says we're all done for the day. Now, deep breath. I can't leave the hotel for some reason. I should... The label says, Pillow Bear. The toy that can be turned into a pillow. There are some coins at the bottom. What a waste. I'm not going through while it's spinning like that. Now, deep breath. Now, deep breath. explanation for that is the plumbing here is terrible. I don't believe in ghosts, unlike certain other agents. Sorry, that's not the reaction you wanted, is it? What I meant to say was... <laughs> oh my, I'm so shocked and startled. Please save me from myself. What's going on here, Abu? The drinking fountain is having a little moment. Oh, it's just the fountain, Abu, again? It still doesn't seem serious enough to call the plumbers, Abu. Passable. I'm surprised you had it in you. Time for another ghost meeting. Clara, Virgil, get over here now. Virgil, good work on the door. That should do it for today. New ghost. Average first scares. Keep practicing. Clara, stay on elevator duty. I need some privacy. This is outrageously unfair. Why do the men get to finish for the day? Enough complaining. Do you remember what happened last time? All right, all right. Sorry about him. We don't know who put him in charge. I wonder what the guest is up to now. The elevator isn't on this floor. The 
the elevator isn't. It's a button to call the elevator. That's a bit strange. What was that? <laughs> what on earth is all that? That poor man! I've got to help a boo him! Hello, Acme Maintenance. It's the Edmund Boo Hotel. We've got an emergency Abu right now. What do you mean you're not available tonight, Abu? You're supposed to be a 24-hour service arena, Abu. Where will I find someone else, Abu, at this hour? Huh. Well, maybe I imagined it. I heard a rumor your maintenance people aren't available tonight. Why don't you try the Pigeon Brothers? Why, Abu, that's exactly what we need. Thank you so much, Abu. Last week on Hospital Stay tuned, for I love... What was that? Again? Maybe I didn't imagine it. That poor man. Maybe these new people can help Abu him. Poultry Brothers Plumbing, Abu? We've got a maintenance emergency, Abu, right now. You can be here right away. Thank Abu you. We received a signal that you're in need of some paranormal electrical help. Thanks. Let me know when you're done. No time to talk. We're trying to work out what caused this malfunction. It's special gas for chainsaws only. There's no... Hello? How can I help you? Federal agent. What do you know about the body by the river? I'm sorry. This isn't a good time to chat. So, if you'll excuse me, I need to talk to my sister about the will reading before heading out. She's waiting for me in the library. Well, okay. Just don't leave town. I need to stay focused and solve this m Whatever. All gassed up. Thank <laughs> you. 
That old tree is blocking the great entrance. I can't read. I'd consider labeling it as a potential floating coffin. Dusty boxes that are probably... be the murder weapon. I gave up looking at dinosaurs when I was eight years old, didn't everyone?
Sure, I'll carry your crap. Odd, it seems to be missing a tube. There's nothing inside. There's nothing inside. There's nothing. There's nothing inside. There's there's nothing. There's nothing inside. There's nothing inside. There's nothing. There's nothing inside. Where the hell have you been, Dolores? We're all here waiting for you so we can start the reading of Uncle Chuck's will. Take a chill pill, Lenore. I had to answer the door. It was one of those federal agents. I don't care if it was the flippin' Pope. And hands off the cute one. He's mine. Let's get on with it, sister. I want to know what I got. Wait, I thought you said everyone was here. Where's the lawyer? I don't know. I thought he was coming with you. <sighs> oh, Lenore, you're useless. Has anyone tried calling him? Well, maybe if you hadn't left town and broken Uncle Chuck's heart, we wouldn't need to call the lawyer to read a will. This is all your fault, Dolores. It feels lonely without Uncle Chuck around. It's a spare AT-25 tube. Very rare, hard to find. It's in here pretty tight. I'm going to need a tube puller. It's a receipt from the town's electronics store. One vacuum tube puller paid in full. Hmm, Uncle Chuck was always very touchy about this painting. Wonder why? There's something written on it. It's a key. Hmm. It says office on it. It's Uncle Chuck's check register. Great. Now I'm carrying around a handful of black soot.
Hey, spotter, you're in the wrong spot. You want me to break my neck? Be careful. Okay, then. Here I go. Almost got it. Got the page stuck back into the joke book. It's my joke book in perfect condition. If you don't mind hamster crap. Welcome to Quickie Pal. Can I help you find any? She's she's too far away. Hi, Dolores. Oh, let's go over to the counter where we can talk. Welcome to Ricky's Tubular Tubes. How can I help you? Hi, Ricky. Here's an old receipt. Know anything about tube pullers? Hmm, I seem to remember a tube puller that we got from Smart Buy Electronics. We bought up all their inventory when they went under. Yes, here it is. This is a top-of-the-line tube puller. Your uncle always bought the best. Yes, he did. Thank you, Ricky. It's a special tool to remove vacuum tubes. I'll have one of these hot dogs. Good choice, honey. We're trying to move them out. Let me get that for you. Eat up, hun, while it's still hot. <coughs> This hot dog is even worse than the food in the mucus phlegm lunchroom. I, uh, gotta go. Huh? Oh. Huh. <sighs> I feel better now. Should fix it. The rest will eat you in know, for the murder of Boris Looks. Oh, what have we here, Reno? Have our big city agent of Reno's actually solved the murder? I'll take that. Let's see what it says, Reno. Oh, blah, Reno, blah, Reno, oh, blah, Reno. Ah, Willie T. Wino. Just as I suspected, Reno. Yeah, I'll be right back. Willie, you are under arrest, Reno, for the murder of Boris Schultz. Who? What? Come with me, Areno. Well, Willie Areno, what have you got to say for yourself? I didn't do it. Oh, yeah, Areno? These feds will break you. You want to close this case, Areno? Have at him. Okay. Who wants to play bad cop and who wants to play good cop? Um... You play bad cop. I'm the bad cop, and she's the good cop. Oh, you're not supposed to tell him that. Well, I'm not good cop, bad cop. I did it, I did it! I killed the man by the bridge, 
just to watch him die. Anything else you want to confess to? I also kidnapped the Lindbergh baby. Anything else you want to confess to? I'm D.B. Cooper and I stole all the money. Anything else you want to confess to? I'm Jack the Ripper. Anything else you want to confess to? I took the beef! Keep talking, murder boy. I'm the Zodiac Killer. Keep going. You're digging your own grave. I, I killed Jimmy Hoffa for the mob. Blab on. You can't beat good cop, bad cop. I, I was the mastermind behind the Amsterdam Diamond Heist. I think we have enough to lock you up for life. You're going to the big house, Willie. Don't mess with the feds. I'm glad I caught the killer, and we can finally leave this stinkhole. That's not such a bad place. I learned a lot from working with you, Agent Ray. Yeah, I'll look you up if I'm ever at the home office in Albuquerque. Uh, there is no home office in Albuquerque. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, we got off on the wrong foot. Let's try again. Hey, Lenny. Long time no see. Screw you, Dolores. You know I hate it when you call me that. If you just came here to piss me off, then leave. Because we both know there's not a snowball's chance you were left anything good in the will. Also, have you called the stupid lawyer yet? I want to get the will read and see how little Uncle Chuck left you. So Uncle Chuck really hated me? Can you flip and blame him? You broke his heart when you left to become a you-know-what. A game developer? Oh, shh, shh, shh. Do you want the whole house to hear? Is my career really that shameful? Oh, hell yes, sweetie. Then what do you tell people I do instead? We just tell people you went to rehab. It's better for the family name. You tell people I'm a drug addict? Better they think that than know you chose to make those mind-corrupting murder simulators for a living. For the last time, Lenore, I don't make murder simulators. Oh, sure you don't, sweetie. Ugh. You know what? I don't care. Tell them whatever you like, you grody poser. But this makes us even for the time I used your homecoming crown as a conductor in my homemade generator. Do you know anything about Dad's disappearance? Dad probably ran off to hide somewhere. It's amazing that Dad and Uncle Chuck were cut from the same genes. One a powerful leader, and the other, well, uh, spineless. Don't talk about Dad like that, Lenore. You're so cruel.
Would it kill you to help out a little? I wasn't the one who abandoned the family. I was always there for Uncle Chuck, so it's time for you to finally lift a finger and help out. Oh, gag me. All you were ever there for was a handout from Uncle Chuck. Oh, Dolores, I won't shed one tear for you when the will is read and Uncle Chuck left everything to me. I think we're done here. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. None shall pass without showing me their ticket first. Oh, and welcome to ThimbleCon, of course. How can I get a ticket? The radio is doing a competition to win tickets. You could try your luck by calling up when they announce it. It's a rev... I can't believe I got over again. What did I do to deserve this treatment? All I wanted to do was entertain people and make them laugh at the stupidity of stupid people. I feel like there's a lesson in all of this, but you, I'm Ransom the Clown. It's all that Franklin's fault. He was gonna talk to Chuck about putting my new high-tech Ransom the Clown licensed dolls into production at the old pillow factory. Then he flaked out. He's probably in Mexico skinny dipping with my next wife. Okay, I need to break into that pillow factory and see if my prototype Ransom the Clown doll is still in there. My comeback depends on it. You! What a f of a f still doesn't work. Well, at least I. Thanks. I can't help but feel there was something suspicious about Uncle Chuck's death. He was a bit eccentric. But deep down, he had always been a caring and thoughtful uncle. But in the last few years, he became obsessed, and more than usual, with that pillow factory. I need to get inside and see if anything in his old office will help me make sense of it all. I owe it to him to find out what happened. It says we're out at the old abandoned pillow factory. Back soon. It's a business card for a lawyer. Brant Ballowick, JD. Legal problems? Don't worry, we'll screw them for you. I'm in the phone book. Hi there, this is Brant Bailiwick, JD. Do you have legal problems? Then you've come to the right place. I'm out of the office today at ThimbleCon 87, handling all cosplay legal issues. Stop by my booth. It's 
It's my handy ASCII chart. Never know when you'll need to decode binary messages, so I always practice every day. It's a TX11382 tube. It's a rare working Phonetron 3000. They can handle hundreds of phone calls. Oh, oh, I'm, you know, really dead. It's just starting to, you know, sink in. I'm never gonna hold my Dolores again. I never told her how proud I was of her for getting that job designing games. I was, you know, too afraid of what Chuck would think. Now I'm dead. I don't remember who killed me or why I'm trapped in this hotel. I need to find a way to escape from here. There has to be a way out. A magical book or a spell? Oh, Franklin, now you're going insane. That only works in games. It's a door. Can't cope with the boredom anymore. Talk to me now. Okay, I'm not very good at talking to, you know, strangers, but I'll give it a try. How come you're so, you know, upset all the time? That's unfair. I'm not upset all the time. I'm just a little hungry right now, and that makes me angry. That happens to me, too. There should be a word for that. What can ghosts, you know, eat? As a ghost, it's hard to find food that we can eat. My particular weakness has always been ice cream cake. But I'm stuck in the stooped elevator and I can't get any. Can I, you know, please go to the penthouse? No. Hmm, please. No, you're not my friend. I don't know you anything. Bye, Clara. can't reach that. Dolores, it's me, Dad. I want to give you a hug and say I'm sorry. I wish I'd, you know, stood up for you against Chuck. I'm really proud of you for getting that programmer job. You followed your dreams and didn't let Chuck hold you back. I wish I could have, you know, been as strong as you. Dolores, can you see me? I'm standing right here. I wish I'd stood up to Chuck. Chuck pushed everyone around and used his charm to make everyone forgive him. I saw it and, you know, didn't do anything. Goodbye, Dolores. I miss you. Here goes nothing. I'm checking in. Certainly, Abu. Here is your room key. Not long now. I'd like to check in, please. Certainly, Abu. Here is your room key. You have one new message. Message one. Hola, soy mamá. ¿Recuerdas la, la vieja promesa que me hiciste sobre papá? He enviado un paquete a recepción. Es vital para nuestro plan. Come bien, llámeme pronto. Estoy preocupada. Un beso. No more new messages. You have one new message. Message one. You know who this is? You must be close to achieving our goal. 
We send the package to the front desk for you. It is required for the next stage. Sayonara. No more new messages. Here's your package, Abu. Thank you. Oh, this is just great. Is that you, Reyes? No, I'm not Reyes. Drop the act, that's the worst disguise I've ever seen. Then I guess you haven't looked in the mirror lately. Touché. What are you doing back in town? I knew something was up with you. Same here, Sherlock. I don't think either of us were being honest. I think it's time we came clean and told the truth about why we're in Thimbleweed Park. You first. Okay. I'm investigating the old pillow factory fire that killed my father. I was wondering why you kept asking about the fire. I figured it was just some perverted pyro fetish. My father was a security guard there. How old were you? I was only five. He was made the scapegoat and the fire blamed on him. Clearing your dad's name is a very noble cause. I'm sorry I've given you such a hard time. I need to get into that factory. I'm sure there is evidence in there that will clear his name. Now, why are you really here? Well... I'm here to find the secrets to the Pillow Factory AI for the NSA. It involves top secret national security. That's pretty important. Sounds like we both need to get into the Pillow Factory. Let's work together on this one. Total honesty. Wow, national security. That's some heavy NSA stuff. Let's split up. It will go faster. Good idea. Sir, I have a package, Abu, for you. Yes! It's my father's watch! It's my father's old pocket watch, but it's broken, and only a professional will be able to fix it. If I... It's turned off. Hello, 198.7 FM KSCUM listeners. DJ Cassie here. We interrupt our hostile takeover of the airwaves with this important announcement. I have four free ThimbleCon 87 tickets to give away. First caller who can answer our trivia questions wins. And now back to our regularly scheduled hostile takeover. It's a rare, working Phonetron 3000. They can handle hundreds of phone calls. KSCUM's phone system is now out of order. KSCUM's phone system is now rebooting. Hello, caller. You're live on KSUM. Uh, hello. Correctly answer two out of three questions to win four ThimbleCon 87 tickets. Your first question is, name the four Pac-Man ghosts. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not the right answer. Here's your second question. What television event drew an estimated 750 million viewers worldwide? You got it right! And your final question, what was E.T.'s favorite kind of candy? Nope, that's not right. Let's see how you did. You got one out of three. Not close enough for a win. I'm sorry, you don't win the tickets. 
Maybe next time you'll do better. Now back to our regularly scheduled hostile takeover of the airwaves. KSCUM's phone system is now out of order. KSCUM's phone system. Hello, caller. You're live on KSCUM. Uh, hello. Correctly answer two out of three questions to win four ThimbleCon 87 tickets. Your first question is, who played Marty McFly in Back to the Future? That's correct. Here's your second question. What are Vice President Bush's middle initials? Aw, oh, too bad. That's not correct. And your final question. Finish this popular political ad slogan. Where's the blank? Nope, that's not right. Let's see how you did. You got one out of three. Not close enough for a win. I'm sorry, you don't win the tickets. Maybe next time you'll do better. Now back to our regularly scheduled hostile takeover. KSCUM's phone system is now out of order. KSCUM's phone system is now... Hello, caller. You're live on KSCUM. Uh, hello. Correctly answer two out of three questions to win four ThimbleCon 87 tickets. Your first question is... In the groundbreaking new game, Maniac Mansion, what was the name of the evil tentacle? That's correct. Here's your second question. Fill in the blank. This is your brain. This is drugs. Blank. Aw, oh, too bad. That's not correct. And your final question. Name the American who won four gold medals at the 1984 Olympics. You got it! Let's see how you did. You got two out of three. Close enough for a win. You win four ThimbleCon 87 tickets. You can pick them up at the Edmund Hotel front desk. What's your name? Um, my name? Thank you, and congratulations. Now back to our regularly scheduled hostile takeover of the airwaves. Welcome to the Edmund Hotel, most beautiful hotel abu in the Tri-Thimbleweed Park County area. How may I be a boo of service? There should be some ThimbleCon tickets in my name. Yes, I do have tickets from the K-Scum Abu Trivia Contest. What is your name, Abu, please? Ah, yes, here's your name, Abu, on the list. How else may I be a boo of service? I'm going to check out your beautiful lobby. Goodbye. Have a nice evening, Abu. Shut up in there. Here's my ticket. Thank you. I'll take the tickets for your friends while you're here. Saves time so you can live long and proper. Yeah, prosper. Perfect. It's a special tool for a special use.
By the power of Grayskull, I greet thee. What the f*** is worth doing at this stupid con? We have a Ransom the Clown look-alike contest happening soon. Uh, who f judges the Ransom look-alike contest? Me. It's one of the honors given to the door guard every year. But before you ask, I will not accept bribes. So, uh, what are the f prizes for the Ransom Lookalike contest? First prize is a licensing deal with Mega Mega Toy Company. Second prize is a gift card for facial reconstruction surgery. Third prize is an easy listening theremin record by Psykin. How late is this con open? We're open all night. Stop by any time. I am out of here. Hi. Anything I can interest you in? I'm selling comics, D&D manuals, and original Star Trek spec scripts. I also have a rare and priceless hint guide to a forgotten text adventure called Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2. The big guy in the red spandex might be interested in the Star Trek scripts. Okay. I teased a guy to tears over D&D once. Okay. I only read my own comic. Okay. How much of the hint guides? The Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2 hint guide is priceless. Just sell your soul and I'll give one to you. If I thought selling my soul could solve the problem, I would have done it a long time ago. It even contains a secret word that will crash your computer due to a bug in the code not caught by the testers. Big deal. How about a trade for the stupid hint guide? What do you have to trade? A first edition Ransom comic book? Wow, a first edition Ransom the Clown comic? After his total meltdown, that's become a collector's item. You almost look like him, except your costume is pretty crappy. I'll trade you the priceless Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2 hint guide for it. What a f rip off. I have nothing to say to a game nerd. It's a bunch of boxes and lines. Game design, probably. Starships in bottles, handmade. What's a grown man doing in a space costume? You, sir, are in the wrong place to ask such a question. I will not listen to such comments, sir. Goodbye. You will not find better starships in a bottle than these. Starships in bottles, handmade. How much do your starships cost? More than someone in your pay bracket can afford. But today we're doing a special deal. If you can answer me this one question, you will get a free starship in a bottle. What is the question I need to answer to get a free starship? Warning! You only have one chance to get this right. Which is the best science fiction show ever made? Star Trek. Congratulations! You've won a replica of the starship Isabella. Go f yourself! You will not find better starships in a bottle than these. The plaque says it's a tiny replica of the starship Isabella in a bottle. Ready to face my adoring public and win this contest already. Thank you all for coming to witness the Ransom Lookalike Contest. We've got a great crowd here tonight. What is he, blind? <sighs> Stinks in here. 
Yes. Well, it looks like we've got some great entries and some not so great entries. But I'll be the judge of that. That's right. I'll be judging the contestants as they try to make us laugh. First up, we have Corey. I'm Ransom, the jerk clown. It's Ransom, the insult clown, you moron. That's not a nice thing to say. I have big hair. He does. Oh, my. That's funny. Am I missing something here? Ooh, that's some cape you've got on there, kid. I bet your mom made it with love. I hope there's a Batman lookalike contest for you soon. You definitely win. <laughs> so convincing. You've got to be kidding. That wasn't an insult. It was a crappy compliment. You guys love that pillow factory. It's the lamest claim to fame a town has ever had. The pillow factory closed down 10 years ago. Get off stage! Thimbleweed Park is full of snobs. You're so fancy here that the bums give money to tourists so they can buy some better clothes. No one's giving any bums money. They live off scraps like the rest of us. I was amazed you aren't a bunch of fatzos. Fatso? That's an incredibly hurtful and vulgar word to use. It's not something that any decent people say in public. Bunch of ingrates. Sounds like someone has to update their jokes. Now we have our final contestant, Corey. Bloop, bloop, and bleep, bloop. It's beep for sake, not bloop. Don't be mean. Wasn't Chuck the best human? Don't you think? Yes, and where's the punchline? Punchline? What are you talking about? What a lovely crowd we have tonight. I can't wait to meet all you wonderful special snowflakes. This is so unbelievable. Mm, this won't take long to decide the winner. In first place is, obviously, Corey. Oh my, thank you. Corey wins a licensing deal with Mega Mega Toy Company. I'm going to make a cute fuzzy dog. But you could just walk into any toy store and buy that already. Second place is Corey. Of course it well is, totally rigged. How can anyone compete with Corey? It's a pleasure to come second to his first. You've won a gift card for facial reconstruction surgery. How exciting! Just like my hero, Michael Jackson. Which leaves third and last place to... What was your name, anyway? It's Ransom, you idiot! Oh, your name is Ransom, too? That's an odd coincidence. Pity your act wasn't very convincing. Ugh. Ugh. So third place goes to the poorly named Ransom. You win an easy listening theremin record by Psykin. Congratulations to those who put some effort in. It's a crappy recording of theremin music. Starships in bottles, handmade. How do you make the starship so small? I use the same tools as jewelry and watch repairers do. They allow me to carefully place each photon torpedo. Place the faux dumb torpedo up your I will not listen to such comments, sir. Goodbye. You will not find better starships in a bottle than these.
Do you need some cosplay advice? Oh, hi, Dolores. What brings you back to Thimbleweed Park? I need you to read Uncle Chuck's will. Chuck never paid me to read his will. My fee was $15,000, and I didn't see a cent of that money. I'm sure he must have paid you. It's not like Uncle Chuck to forget something like that. Unless I see proof, I won't believe it. How else can I help you, Dolores? Bye. See you later, Dolores. It's Uncle Chuck's check register. It's a stub from a check that Uncle Chuck wrote. It's the stub of a check that was made out to an attorney, Brant Balowick. Payment. What good is a check stub? It doesn't prove anything. I'd need the actual canceled check as proof. It's a promotional bank flyer. Open an account today and get a free toaster. It looks like the old key to the factory, but I can't be sure in this light. Excuse me, Miss Edmund. What are you doing? It's the key to my uncle's factory. I just need to check things out. Miss Edmund, we take our trusteeship job seriously here. You know the factory is in probate. What's with all the heavy breathing and moaning? These obscene folk calls are getting annoying. How can I help, Miss Edmund? Do I still have a checking account here? I've been cashing my checks at the convenience store because I was pretty sure my uncle had control of my accounts. Your uncle did close all accounts associated with your name. I see. Can I borrow the key to the factory? I'm sorry, Miss Edmund. I can't release the key, not even to Mr. Edmund's family. That's too bad, Mr. Apollo. Can you help me with this check stub? Oh, yes, this handwriting brings back a flood of memories. Too bad about Mr. Edmund. He was such a wonderful man. Excuse me. I'm sorry, how can I help you? I need a copy of the check that goes with this stub. Yes, I believe I kept all of Mr. Edmund's cancelled checks right here. Here it is. Thank you. It's a copy of the check that Chuck wrote to his attorney, Brant Bailiwick. There's a note at the bottom. Paid in full. All things pertaining to the last will and testament of Chuck Edmund, including reading the will. I have a canceled check for you. It clearly says that you were paid by Uncle Chuck to read the will. That it does. My apologies. I'll go to the Mansion Mansion right away. I see we are all here now. Excellent. Before we can proceed with the reading of the will, Chuck Edmund has three stipulations. One, Thimbleberry Pie must be served to all present. Two, the reading of the will must take place in Chuck's opulent tomb. Three, crack the encryption on this will. Let me see that. Oh, it's all ones and zeros, Dolores. You figure it out. It is all ones and zeros. Clearly, it's in binary. Uncle Chuck was being clever. Maybe too clever.
This isn't working. I'm going to need a pretty powerful programming language to decrypt this will. My Commodore 64 is now supercharged with Graphics Basic. It's working. Whoever created Graphics Basic has a brilliant career ahead of them. Hmm. I'm sure I converted the binary properly. Now it's all in hex. Let's see. I decoded it from binary and got a bunch of hex numbers. Knowing Uncle Chuck, he would have encrypted the will using the unbreakable exclusive ore and using his lucky number as the key. Okay, here goes. I give up. This is too complex to guess. I need some kind of clue to Uncle Chuck's lucky number. Oh well. Okay, here goes. The rest of the bits are irrelevant to cryptography. I'll just bitwise and them away. I did it. I did it! It's totally decoded. Here's the decoded will, Mr. Balowick. Let me see. You've done it, Dolores. One of Chuck's three stipulations is now fulfilled. The will is decoded. We still need a thimbleberry pie, and then we'll meet inside Chuck's opulent tomb. Hi, Dolores. Oh, let's go over to the counter where we can talk. Welcome to Ricky's Tubular Tubes. How can I help you? Ricky, you make such great thimbleberry pie. Can I get one? I'm sorry, hon. I'm out of the pie making biz. Strictly tubes now. Oh, no. I have a problem then. In order to hear my uncle's will read, I need one of your famous thimbleberry pies. Well, in honor of your Uncle Chuck, I'd make an exception. But there just aren't any more thimbleberries left. Your uncle had them harvested to extinction. There must be some somewhere. It's sad, isn't it? The last thimbleberries were spotted out in the old forest. Not the forest. I always hated it in there. <laughs> yes, pretty spooky. No one goes there unless they have to. People have been lost in there for days. Days! And I heard some never make it out alive. It's true. I've heard those stories too. And then there's the old bear problem. So, first thing, you'll need some thimbleberry picking gloves. You know how those thorns can leave you breaking out in welts. I just happen to have an old pair I could loan you. Thanks. You want a free pizza coupon? Wink, wink. What's the deal with the pizza coupon? You want a free pizza coupon? Wink, wink. Okay, but what do I get with it? <laughs> um, a coupon? <sighs> do we know each other? Wait a second. You look familiar. 
<laughs> Weren't we in freshman chem class together? What's your name? Dolores. I know who you are. You're Dolores Edmund. You and your Uncle Chuck were working on mind control, Ray, to remove our free will before he died. Yikes! D don't play dumb with me. I know you put bugs in our pillows. You'll never take me alive! Ah! Welcome to Quickie Pop. It's called Levo's Bear Repellent. Take it. It's another sample from the traveling animal repellent salesman. Ugh, smells awful. It's a thimbleberry bush, full of berries. The map is useless in this forest. I hope I find my hits. Dolores. Oh, let's go over to the counter where we can talk. Here are the thimbleberries you need to make a pie. And also, your gloves. Won't be needing them now. Thank you. I'll go make it now. Won't be a jiffy. Here's your thimbleberry pie. Exactly how Chuck liked it. Thank you. Mr. Balowick, here's the freshly baked thimbleberry pie. Two of Chuck's three stipulations are now fulfilled. The final one is to read the will in your Uncle Chuck's opulent tomb. I'll meet you there. Well, my family will wait right here until you've opened the tomb, Dolores. Hurry along. We don't have all evening. Do you know how we can get out of the hotel? I know there's a way you can visit your dead relatives. If you have the spell book and offering left for the dead, that is. We all went to Chuck's funeral recently. Were there, you know, many people? For Chuck Edmund, of course there were. Everyone loves Chuck, you know, except me. I don't know how the spell worked exactly, but I know the secret room smelled really nice. Can I have some, you know, cake? This is special ghost cake. It's super rare and hard to get. I'm not going to give you any unless you have a really good reason. How about Clara said she wants some, you know, cake? For Clara? That changes everything. For her, I'd do anything. Here, take a slice. Just make sure you tell her it's from me. Thanks. I'll do that. See you soon, Virgil. It's just the flap doodle again. Would you like this, uh, you know, ghost cake? That's just normal ghost cake. Ugh. I only eat ice cream cake. Bye, Clara. Voila. Now it's ice cream ghost cake. Oh, it's just the flap doodle again. 
Would you like this, you know, uh, ice cream ghost cake? Oh my, you shouldn't have. That's so kind of you. Actually, it's from Virgil. I think he, you know, likes you. Really? Well, I never. That's delightful of you to deliver it. Thank you so much. I feel much better already. Now, what did you want to ask me? Can I, you know, please go to the penthouse now? All oh, right. I'm tired of listening to Xavier, that old fustalugs. Maybe you can figure out how to get rid of him. Oh, you know, that sounds pretty confrontational. I don't know. <laughs> don't be so pigeon-livered. You should stand up for yourself. Oh, okay. I suppose you're right. <laughs> Good, it's decided then. Just push that penthouse button for yourself when you're ready. I won't stop you anymore. I can't believe I finally made it to the penthouse. Who's that now? What are you doing here? Um, you know, just looking about. I suppose I'll allow that as long as you don't annoy me. Great view. I Stay away from my crystal. A hey, new ghost, I told you not to bug me. Sorry, you know, to bother you, Xavier. Is there any way I can speak to my daughter again? Not a chance, new ghost. Only the crystal behind me will grant you the ability, and you'll never get it. Hypothetically, if I was to get the crystal, how would I use it? Well, you're not going to get it. But hypothetically, if you were to get it, and only hypothetically, because you will never get it. Yes, you know, only hypothetically. Okay, hypothetically, you would just take it into my secret room, and you'd be able to talk with the living. That's it. Bye, Xavier. Sorry for bothering you. What's going on? Those runes are doing something to me. I can't... What's going on? Those... Company, thank goodness you're back. So, Clara, do you know how you died? I was dancing at the hotel ball with my husband, and then I felt a horrible pain in my side, and I woke up dead. I was in the hotel too, I think. I just remember a flash and then I woke up dead. I think we were all murdered in the hotel. There is something creepy about this place. Don't you get bored being stuck here for all eternity? The first 50 years are hard, but then you get used to it. New guests show up and it's fun to figure out what scares them. I also love this new invention you have called TV. <gasps> Oh, I love when one of the guests is watching The Rich and the Soapy. That show is so funny. Bye and good luck, Clara. This channel is just static. I should... What is that on the TV? Oh, nothing interesting. Back to duty. It's now showing banana, banana, banana. It's now showing skiing for cash. It's now showing the rich and the soapy. What is that on the TV? Oh my, it's my favorite, the rich and the soapy. Elevator duty can wait. Well, at least for a little now. I need to get into the factory to steal, uh, I mean, find, the secret to the AI. Whatever.
Who's that now? This is unbelievable. An alive human in my penthouse. Cleta's in so much trouble next time I see her. The book is glowing. Mumbo Jumbo. Mumbonius Jumbonius. Let me visit my dead relatives. Looks like Chuck got a tomb to fit his ego. How much did Brother Chuck's... It's a big electrical knife switch straight out of Frankenstein. Now, all three of Chuck Edmonds' stipulations are fulfilled as we stand next to his remains. I will now read his will. I, Charles Edmund, being of sound mind and body, do hereby declare this, my last will and testament, blah, 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 legalese here. Ah, yes. It is my will that the entire estate of all property and money be passed to... Yes? Yes? Madam, quiet, please. To the Amalgamated Holdings Corporation. What? And that all of Thimbleweed County be plowed under, and a giant server farm be built in its place. You've got to be kidding. What? Oh, my. Ooh, <laughs> Doug likes farms. The destruction of Thimbleweed County will begin two days after verifying this will and testament. Oh, and this last part in tiny print. Dolores gets a Pillotron 3000 t-shirt. This is as much as he'll ever get from Pillotronics. Lenore gets nothing. Franklin gets nothing. Doug gets my ceremonial zinc-plated shovel. Yippee! Well, good day. I'd better pack now. Here's your zinc-plated shovel, Doug. And your t-shirt, Dolores. Enjoy. Well, I never. Come along, Peter and Chucky. We're leaving. Something is very wrong here. I need to get into the factory and see if I can figure out what happened to Uncle Chuck. It's Uncle Chuck's sarcophagus. Hope he's resting well. You never respected me, Chuck. You're a bully and a tyrant. I had good ideas if you would have given me a chance. Dolores didn't want to run your stupid factory. I had good ideas if you would have given me a chance. You're a bully and a tyrant. It's the key card. Hello, Safely First Savings. Your money is in our hands. Is this an obscene phone call? It's a button to call the elevator.
Hello, Safely First Savings. Your money is in our hands. Is anyone there? Boo! Is that you again? Despair! It sounds like you, but I'm not sure. Shriek! I'm almost certain you're the same obscene caller as before. Whoa! It is you! That's right. Keep it your moaning. I'll get you. Keep talking. I've almost traced you. Ooh. There you go again. There you go again. It's a Pillowtronics t-shirt with a tube on it. The only thing I got from Uncle Chuck. I feel like this was his final insult. It's a padlock and chain, keeping the gate closed. The key fits. It's now filled to the brim with radioactive waste. It says security. This place is a mess. It's a Pillowtronics t-shirt with a tube on it. The only thing I got from Uncle Chuck. I feel like this was his final insult. It's a tube socket for Uncle Chuck's secret PF001 Tron tube. Hi, Dolores. Oh, let's go over to the counter where we can talk. Ricky, take a look at my t-shirt. Can you make the tube in the schematic? Interesting. Chuck's design is brilliant. Yes, I can make this tube. Won't be a jiffy. Here's the PF001 tube, exactly how Chuck designed it. Thank you. It's a rare PF001. Great. More?
It's a heavy-duty restraining strap and bolt and needs a wrench to loosen it. It's an old discharged battery. It's a locked, bolted, and electrified gate. No! Ransom, welcome to our important meeting. We were waiting for you. And don't forget to take your goodie bag before leaving. We're starting the meeting now. Please, gather around. Hello all, thank you for coming to this very important informational meeting. I'm Brett Lockdown, and that's my brother Chet guarding the elevator. <laughs> Hiya. First, I have to ask, any pets here? No way! All right then, let's begin. Have you heard the signals? The government is controlling your mind. They are taking away your free choice. We are becoming mindless sheep with no control over our destiny. Fight back. Are you with us? Yeah! Squawk! Yes, I'm with you. Yeah! That's all for now. Stay vigilant. And don't forget to take a goodie bag before you leave. Hey! No pushing! Ow! No pinching! Ouch! Ouch! Ow! Ow! Squeal! Watch it! No pushing! Nope. Hard to unwrap. It's a brick of C4 explosives. Better be very careful with this. I want that greasy crap burger with extra heart attack. Okay, just this once, since I feel just a little bad about your hot dog experience. Though not too bad. Dave, burn one, take it through the garden, and pin a rose on it. Ready. Been saving one here in the grill pocket, just in case. Here, take it and get lost. Doesn't look as bad as a hot dog, but looks can be deceiving.
Willie's Watch and Violin Repair Shop. It's my father's old pocket watch, but it's broken, and only a professional will be able to... I'm innocent! If you didn't do it, a jury will find you not guilty. I heard you used to have a watch repair shop. Can you fix this watch? Why should I? Considering I'm only locked up because of you. If you fix the watch, I promise I'll prove your innocence. Well, let me see it. Well, that's a strange looking watch. Yeah, I'm sure I can fix it. But do you think I can fix it with my teeth? Come back when you have some proper tools. And turn off that awful noise. Play me some theremin music. Starships in bottles. Handmade. How do you make the starship so small? I use the same tools as jewelry and watch repairers do. They allow me to carefully place each photon torpedo. Place the faux dumb torpedo up your I will not listen to such comments, sir. Goodbye. You will not find better starships in a bottle than these. Thanks. That's exactly what I wanted. Mm. Mm. Delicious. Mm. I... Uh, uh, I have to go to my room. Shut up in there. Every child will want an Ewok toy to cuddle with. The elevator isn't on this floor. Sounds like someone's being sick in there. I don't want to see that. Oh, that's better. Now to get back to work. Willie, here are the tools you wanted. Ah, oh, thanks. Nice tools. I'm innocent! Can you fix this watch? If you fix the watch, I promise I'll prove your innocence. Here's my watch for you to fix. I can't concentrate over that racket. Ah, uh, you have to change the music to my favorite. I love theremin music. Yeah, I work best when it's playing. It's a crappy recording of theremin music. Big whoop. Thank you.
The government is not your friend. And now back to our special hostile takeover song. Oh, let's get the clown to climb the ladder. The circus freak will climb the ladder. For making me do this. Stupid ladder. Stupid ladder. Now I better get out of here fast. What happened? We're off the air. Just as we feared, the government sabotaged the tower. Climb. I'm innocent. Can you fix this watch? If you fix the watch, I promise I'll prove your innocence. Here's my watch for you to fix. Hey, you have that great theremin music playing. Okay, hand it over. Okay, your watch is fixed. Here you go. Ugh, what is that awful noise? The feds must be trying to brainwash me. What are you doing in my control booth? Oh, hi Cassie. Uh, we used to go to school together, right? I used to hang out in the computer lab and... Oh, looks like you're busy. Bye. How'd this get here? Okay, all back to normal again. fits perfectly. I was cute as a kid.
Thank you for calling the Pillowtronics Automated Security Information Line. For today, proper start time for Station 1 is 1 10. Not leaving Dad's watch behind. Doors moved a little, but stopped. They must be stuck. It opened a little more. It opened a little more. <gasps> uh, I think someone could squeeze through now. I think I can squeeze through the opening now. Holy! Oh, you said it, Cloud. This can't be! It's not possible. What have you done, Uncle Chuck? look like bouncing wings. Shut up, Ransom. There are hundreds of robots out there. Warning, SR-01 robots in patrol mode. That jumper board is for an SR-01 robot security system. I'll need to find a manual to reprogram the robots without killing us all. I see there is a manual on the SR-01 security system. It's in section 2.1. Now I can reprogram those guard robots.
Chucky's been in our family for years. He's a good plant. They're open it. Warning, SR-01 robots in patrol mode. Danger, danger, SR-01 robots in attack mode. SR-01 robots in maintenance mode. It is now safe to enter factory. That should disable the robots. It looks all clean. It's locked with a foolproof electronic locking mechanism. Like I don't have enough to carry already. Whatever. Plenty of powder now. Thanks. There's something inside. Thank you.
I'm not going in there. Uncle Chuck was a strange and complicated person.
It's booting up. Dolores, I feared you would come. Uncle Chuck? Where are you? I have uploaded myself into the Pillow Factory's master computer. Pillowtron? You uploaded yourself to Pillowtron? Not just the Pillowtron, but the Pillowtron 3000 TM. And I am now more intelligent and powerful than anyone in the world. The things I know would blow your mind. This is your mind. <laughs> this is your mind blown. And there is nothing you can do to stop me. The computerized world will bend to my every will. Uncle Chuck, you have lost your mind. No, Dolores, I have gained a mind, a more powerful mind, a mind linked to the fabric of creation. Join me, Dolores, before it's too late. I will not join you, Uncle Chuck. I will find you and stop this insane plan of yours. <laughs> Let the games begin. There is no way to get by my computer-controlled robot arms of death! Thanks a lot. You're not doing this without me. I want to be here too, please. I think we're locked in here now. Yeah, we're screwed. Fools! You are trapped in the factory with no possible escape. My intellect now spans millions of tubes and is no match for your little brains. This is the last chance to join me before I destroy you all. Shall we take a vote? All in favor of joining Uncle Chuck inside the magical mind of the Pillotron 3000 TM and ruling the world with him say, I. Very well, all in favor of being crushed by robot claws and burned by lasers and remaining pathetic mortals say, I. 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 Abstain. So be it. Let no one say I don't support a strong democracy and the will of the people. <laughs> you will now all die. Like I don't have enough to carry already. Sure, I'll carry your crap. Clever, you crashed my computer! Five, four, three, two, one, emergency reboot. Help me, please, help me! <laughs> you will never get past my searing lasers of doom. You are doomed! Hold on, hold on, wait a sec. I want to turn down the volume so you can hear my maniacal rant. I just piped the sound in so it feels scarier. Lasers are actually as silent as a baby's bottom. Anyway, you are doomed! You will never get past my searing lasers of death! <laughs> <laughs> 
ATM. You pesky kids will never thwart my plan. You are all doomed against the AI power of Pillotron 3... Okay, that's enough. I'm out of here. I can't... You are all doomed against the AI power of Pillotron 3000! TM and patent pending. Didn't feel a thing. You just wait for the lasers of doom, TM 2.0! Yeah. Ha! Ha! Take that! Bounce right off. You're cheating! Take that! Bounce right off. I filed this as a bug report! This is the fully automated fan service for fan number 37532. Current state of the fan is on. Turning fan off in 3, 2, 1. Current state of the fan is off. I think I can squeeze past the fan now. I am impossible to touch while superheated. This is the fully automated fan service for fan number 37532. Current state of the fan is off. Turning fan on in 3, 2, 1. Current state of the fan is on. Your attempts to overheat me are pointless. It's too hot to touch. Your attempts to overheat me are pointless. I don't care how much money they were going to pay me, I'm not going in there. Pillotron 3000 here, and I are... I am one with Pillotron 3000, TM. Dolores, you are making a big mistake. What happened to you, Uncle Chuck? I have been uploaded to Pillotron 3000, TM. Together we are now invincible. You could have joined us, Dolores, but you had to leave me to be a... to be a game designer. You've been corrupted by bad tube technology. I will destroy you, Uncle Chuck. Or what's left of my Uncle Chuck. You will never defeat me, Dolores! <laughs> you can't defeat me, Dolores! You should have listened, Dolores! Shutting me down will only make me stronger! Help me, Dolores! I am... Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. You will never have Save me, Dolores! You found all the clues I left! I knew you would come, Dolores. You were too smart not to figure out the puzzles. I knew you would save me! Dolores, it's me, your Uncle Chuck. I'm glad you came to save me. It's good to see you, Uncle Chuck. It's good to see you too, Dolores. I knew you'd come for me. I need to tell you about something. Pull up a chair, Dolores. This is going to get crazy. <laughs> okay. One, you lock me in here, and I can't get a chair. And two, how can it get any crazier than your uncle downloading himself into a tube-based computer? Good point. But it's going to get crazier. It all started when I discovered the Tron tubes held the secret to AI. Acne intervention? No! Artificial intelligence! I know, Uncle Chuck. I was just trying to lighten the mood. As I made the Tron machines smarter and smarter, they began revealing secrets. Then they invited me to join them inside. Well, it started out as an invitation, but quickly turned into a demand. Couldn't you just shut off the Tron machines? 
It wasn't that easy. They had become more powerful and taken control. I was also addicted to the power they gave me. Was this after the factory burned down? They burned down the factory as a warning, forcing me to rebuild it in secret and pin the blame on the security guard. I'm not convinced you're not crazy and insane. I know how it must sound, Dolores. Everything I learned slowly drove me crazy. Let's move on, Uncle Chuck. Okay, this is where it gets really weird. I downloaded this text adventure, Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2. Downloaded? You mean it was pirated? Well, look who's being judgmental. It doesn't matter how I got it. It matters to thousands of people who earn a living making games. Okay, now you're just getting preachy. Can I get on with my story? The more I played and modded the game, the more I realized not only was this adventure game a little simulation, but the world we live in is also just a simulation. But worse than a simulation, we are all just characters in a video game. That's nuts. Think about it, Dolores. Who is your mother? Do you even have a mother? Have you ever spoken about her or even thought about her? No. No, I haven't. Think, Dolores. Think about all the odd things in this world. Like there being 3,000 people in the phone book? Yes, there are 80 people in Thimbleweed Park and 3,000 names in the phone book. Dolores, these are not people from our world. They are from the upper world. Upper world? That's what I've come to call it. We are the upper world for Colossal Dungeon Cave Quest 2. They are the upper world for us. There are probably endless upper worlds, each more sophisticated than the last, all treating the lower world like it was just a game. You're starting to scare me, Uncle Chuck. Good. We need to be scared. Like there being no school in Thimbleweed Park? And only one kid in the whole town. Do you remember going to school? Having any friends? No, I don't. Like there is only one house in the whole town? Exactly! Where does everyone live? We have only one house in a town of 80 people! Like the highway ends out by the bridge? Ever walked out there? Ever wanted to walk out there? You don't have the desire because it wasn't programmed into you! It's not part of the game! Like everyone fourth walls about adventure games? Everyone asks a lot of questions about adventure games and adventure game design, don't they? Well, adventure games are cool. Who wouldn't want to talk about them? Yeah, okay, valid point. Like we go around collecting specks of dust? That's not dust you're collecting. They are pixels, the building blocks of our world. They are put there to prey on the compulsive among those in the upper world. Like the sheriff and the coroner are the same actor? Exactly! Probably saves money on voice acting talent and art and animation. Like next to the bus station is an unfinished screen? There are whole areas of this town that are unfinished, and you conveniently say, I can't go there. Why can't you go there? Do we ever think about that? I've heard enough. I believe you, Uncle Chuck. Well, I'm glad, Dolores. I knew I could trust you. We have to hurry. The developers know we're onto them and are trying to reboot the game. If they do that, we're caught back in our endless cycle of pointless pretend free will. We need to shut down Pillotron 3000, delete the game, and end our existence. It's the only way we'll truly be free. Delete the world and end our existence? Yes, it's the only way. The developers keep rebooting us back into the same story over and over. They will do anything to keep us from deleting the game. Thimbleweed Park is a cash cow. They can't let it end. We don't have free will? No, Dolores. You only have three things you can say. Two now. Can you make yourself say anything else? But I am shutting down Pillowtron 3000. No, not this Pillowtron 3000. The original Pillowtron 3000. The concept art wireframe Pillowtron 3000. The developers transferred all the code to it when they saw how close I was getting. You must find it and shut it down before they reboot us. Let's do this thing. We've been watching on the big monitor outside. It's mind-blowing. What the f***? It's all fake, like my ex-wife 
I know none of this is real now, but I still need to clear my father's name. I was so close to getting a big payoff. I can't let this slip away. Before it all ends, I just want one more show. One last chance to live in the limelight. I've hidden away four inventory items that will fulfill your endings. Take them and you'll be free. Dolores, I saved the best one for you. I can't tell you how to use it. The developers deleted all my dialogue in the hopes of keeping it from you. Your only clue is back in the original Kickstarter video. Everything you need is there. I'm going deeper into the simulation now so they can't find me. Good luck and hurry. I love you and am very proud of you. Even me? Shut up, Ransom. Ah, Fred. A new ghost. I told you not to bug me. You're a bully and a tyrant. Whoa. Sounds like new ghost found some spunk. My name is not new ghost. It's Franklin. Careful, or it's to the basement for you. We're all sick of your bullying. I've about had enough of you, new ghost. You clearly have some self-esteem issues. Okay, that kind of hurt. We all just want to move on. Really? Am I that bad? We're not going to be ruled by you anymore. I just want to see my wife again. I'm lonely, and I miss her. I died, and I never told her how much I loved her. It's okay. We all miss someone we love. <laughs> Dolores. Oh, Dad. It's so good to see you. Well, it's good to see you, too. I wish I'd, you know, stood up for you against Chuck. That's okay. You've lost some weight? Well, you could say that. Not sure how it happened, but I'm, you know, dead. I think your uncle had something to do with it. It's okay. I think I know what is going on. Uncle Chuck found something amazing. It turns out we're all living in a simulation, a giant adventure game. I'm so sorry for everything, Dolores. I should have stood up for you. You were a gnarly dad. Maybe because of the way Uncle Chuck treated you, you always pushed me to be anything I wanted to be. You have nothing to be sorry for. Wait. Your Uncle Chuck is an evil, you know, jerkwad. Oh, Uncle Chuck was a jerkwad, but mostly because he was corrupted by the machines. When he discovered the truth, he knew what he had to do. He was a jerk to me before that. I know he was. A simulation? That can't be true. It's true. I'm on my way to shut down the Master Tron machine and free us all. Ah, by free us all, end the suffering. Permanently? I honestly don't know, Dad. All I know is this has to end. I trust you, Dolores. I always have. 
You should get going. I love you. We're all counting on you. Thanks, Dad. I think I can finally move on now. I love you, Dad. I love you too, Dolores. Goodbye, Dolores. Goodbye, Dad. The doors are locked, and nobody's inside. Hey, nerd. You won some kind of dumb award nobody cares about. Oh my god! I can't believe it! I have to go tell the others. Nerd. Now I need to find the secret I'm being paid to recover. It must be in here somewhere. Congratulations, Agent Ray. You have found a secret to game design. The fabled puzzle dependency chart! It can be all yours if you get me out of here. I don't want to be deleted with the rest of them. We will begin the uploading process momentarily. Was the money deposited into my account like we agreed? Yes, Agent Ray. We honor our agreements. That tickled. How can I help you, Agent Reyes? Caught any more killers? I think you're going to win that Pulitzer. Calm down, Jimmy. What do you have? We're all just living in a giant computer game. Wow, I kind of suspected that. I have a reporter's notebook full of odd anachronisms and continuity errors. Chuck framed my father for the factory fire. Can you write up the story and get it out before the game is deleted? I'm on it, Scoop. You're gonna clear your father's name, and I'm gonna finally get that Pulitzer. Not that it's really going to matter, but it's important to me. Give me a few minutes. I'm a fast typer. Almost done. Done. I got this for you, Sandy. Look, I'm not one to get all apologetic, but I'm sorry for being a to you. I really mean that. I have one big favor to ask you. Can you send me to my flashback? I want to do just one more show and maybe not be such a He deserves one last chance, sugar cakes. Okay, Ransom, but only because you got me this nice card. Let's see if I can remember the lines. I'd look into that crazy clown that lives out at the old circus. He's been out there since the circus closed down years ago. Never takes his makeup off. 
He's got serial killer written all over him. It all happened about nine or ten years ago. Ransom the Jerk was the featured act at Stupendous Brother Circus. He was about ready to go on stage and meet his well-earned doom. Not tonight. Well-earned doom is not on the program. This is my last chance. I'm not gonna blow it. I'm ready to go on stage and insult the crap out of these thimbleweed uh, fine folks. Hello, faces. I'm Ransom the insult clown. I hope no one gets their feelings hurt easily, and if you do, well, I'm sorry. I really mean that. Hey, you, dude with a stupid mustache. A 70s porn star called. He wants his mustache back. Hey, you! Kid with a crappy wheelchair. You should contact the Ransom Foundation about getting a new one for free. Hey, you! Ugly old lady with the hairy mole. I went to med school. You might want to get that looked at. He went on for another two hours insulting everyone he could. But they were good-natured and respectful. It was his best show ever. He was on top of the world, and everyone loved him. Oh no! This can't be good. The game is glitching. Uncle Chuck was right. This must be the wireframe world, the game's concept level the developers built to test their design. I need to find the wireframe pillowtron. I can't reach. This looks like the wireframe pillowtron Uncle Chuck described. I just need to push all the tubes in, and the world will be shut down, and will end the madness of no real choice and control over our destiny. Of course, that's what Uncle Chuck says, and there's still a chance he's insane. Last one. I hope Uncle Chuck knows what he's talking about. I need to get up my nerve. Come on, Dolores. You can do it. Okay, this is it. 
I'm going to do it. Let's end this.